let the real deal now. Ooh. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> you know what you got? You think you own the street. We'll pack your bags and your ass is dead meat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number two of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten, which will be absent this week. But WWE Headlines is here where we talk about any important news and rumors related to the WWE Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we're done recording the podcast, it's posted in full on Spreaker itself, on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and it is also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation, having your thoughts and questions read right here in the podcast by tweeting and following at Holds Bard WP. We are also available on Instagram and Facebook at No Holds Bard WP as well, guys. So go give us a follow. I am your host, the self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I am not joined in the studio today by my corporate co host, Ms. Blissful Boss, Mr. Corbin himself, Corporate Cappy. He is unfortunately tied up with school. Um, he's got exams this week, so uh, unfortunately he can't, he can't make the Lord I'm show uh, this week. So I decided to bring in a special co-host this week. Very, very, very special co-host. And he'll be calling into the show soon. Um, when he calls in, I will patch him through for you guys. But my co-host this week is none other than our 2016 No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year, at Michael Chow. At Michael Chow TV on Twitter, he'll be calling to the show, and he'll be my special co-host, and I'm cutting the call right now, and I'll be patching him through. I will patch him through for you guys, but my co-host this week is none other than our 2016. All righty, Michael Chow, how is it going? Oh, the champ is here. The champ the is champ here. Is here. <laughs> my oh, special yeah. co-host today is Michael Chow. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, for you, and is approved by Corporate Cappy. So, guys, it's a true honor to be on the show. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm getting ready to talk about this uh, this cover up that Vince McMahon calls the superstar shakeup. Yeah, more like the superstar clusterfuck. Because I don't know, this was beyond a mess. I don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, already in the chat though by Juggy Brown. Sorry, I forgot the show would be tonight, guys. I'm at work, so I'll listen later. But the Twitter fan of the month, aka Juggy Brown, aka the Big Dog, loves you guys. Have a great show. Off, oh, thank you, Juggy. <laughs> The big Thank dog. you, Juggy. <laughs> Calls himself the Samoan Destroyer. Oh my god! <laughs> Watch out for the Samoan Destroyer. Oh god! I'm sure you'll be getting your uh, package soon. So are you, Michael Chow? We, uh, your package, we had to bring back. Actually, Michael Chow, I want to tell you right now, we're on the air here. Um, Juggy Browns was fine. Your package was 0. 0.5 kilograms over to pay an extra twenty dollars on shipping. So we had to bring oh, it home. To we're gonna f- see if we can condense the box. And make it a little lighter. <laughs> a little bit lighter. If you guys were sending me Alexa Bliss, thank you. Thank you. She, yeah. <laughs> that, that was our plan. <laughs> it was a five-foot box. <laughs> oh, man. You know, wow. that's so funny because I was sending um, my prize on my show I had uh, w- that was won by Corporate Cappy. I had sent it, and they actually notified me that there was a problem with the shipping going into Canada where you guys uh, do your show. So I, I just had a talk with them today, and... Yeah, it's weird. It's trying to ship stuff across, you know. It's terrible. We're like, we're, our countries are right next to each other, right? You'd think I, there'd be no problem. But no, there's always problems on the horizon. Just like you, your package, 0. 0.5 kilograms over. And that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's an American conversion or not. I'm not really uh, uh, smart with the metric system. But 0. 0.5 kil- kilograms is retardedly light. I cannot believe they sent me away. Because they, they're like, would you want to pay an extra $20? I'm like, hell no. I'm going to go condense this box. We're going to send them the same crap. I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter. That way we can just send it to you. So we're working on that. I'm thinking by Friday we'll have it shipped out for you. But Juggy Brown, yours is on the way. Should revive to you anytime this week or Monday next week. So we got all that out of the way. Um, yeah, Superstar Shakeup. I don't know what the hell is this. They should just wait for a draft in my opinion. Exactly. They they barely just had the draft a couple of months ago. Like yeah, half a year ago I think it was. And they're already shaking things up already. Why didn't they just wait till was it was August or September again? Exactly. That's a full year. <laughs> but no, oh, we got I'm, this 
I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking that Vince McMahon goes, "Oh, you know what? Why do the fans love SmackDown Live but not Raw? Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> steal all the stars from SmackDown Live now. Now the fans will have to watch Raw." In my opinion, it kind of uh, didn't work out in Vince's favor because I think SmackDown's a little bit more stacked. Well, in the main main card level, SmackDown's a little bit more stacked, but. Who knows? Uh, I keep I keep reading and from hearing from other podcasters, we're not out of the we're not out of the, the the storm yet. Apparently, there's some more moves on the horizon. Apparently, I don't know what's going on with that and whether that's true or not. We'll just take it with a grain of salt. Um, maybe JBL gets traded to TNA, something like that. I don't oh know, God! <laughs> <laughs> JBL gets traded to the unemployment line. Oh, oh bye bye. That's a great trade. JBL. Just he got traded to the Be the Star program. <laughs> Oh God! Um, but J- there's a fan last night behind JBL. I don't know if you you saw it or you caught it. I saw I, it on Twitter. Yeah, I saw it. That guy had said JBL bullied me, and oh, I God. saw the video of him getting escorted out of the arena. And every time he went by, people people were high fiving him. Mm-hmm. I can Oof. I can honestly see why they did it because I actually saw a picture because he was actually seated like right next behind. to behind. Yeah, that's behind a, him. Yeah, that's a so lot I can of understand that. So, uh. They correct that problem, but WWE doesn't want to correct the direct problem with JBL and what's right. going on. And and the funny thing is, okay, so a lot of people are saying hashtag fire JBL, but I personally, this is only my personal opinion. I, I don't think you should fire him. I seriously think you should get the guy help because even if you fire him, he's still going to bully people. You just right. seriously need to get JBL some help. Um, I 100% agree with you because – Firing is the last thing you want to do in uh, something. And Greg says, "Hey, what's up? Hey, Greg, what's going on?" Uh, the glorious one is here. But yeah, well, in terms right, of the in terms of JBL, um, I think you're right. He does need to be sent. Maybe some internally. You don't you don't release anything saying that uh, JBL is on long term leave or he's just being you know uh, relieved of his duties or anything. You you kind of hide it. You kind of still make him appear on TV, but in the same process, you actually get him some help. Uh, during off-air times, like throughout the week, you, he goes to counseling or whatever. Because this is not the first report from Mal Ronald that JBL's bullied people. Like he, apparently, even in Justin Roberts' book, Justin Roberts used to get bullied all the time by JBL. And some of the shit that I've read in that book, I'm like, oh my god! Like, how is JBL still have his job right now in the company? Exactly. It's, just, it's crazy yeah. what some people get away with in the company in terms of other things too. Like, there's bullying. Um, Physically, steroids. I I honestly think there's still you're allowed to take steroids if you're a part timer, aka Brock Lesnar, <laughs> who just got in trouble from the UFC for that Mark Hunt fight, and then you got Jinder Mahal or HGH Mahal over here, who's got veins <laughs> on top of his veins, just basically knocked the shit out of Finn Balor, and Finn Balor's being put back on the shelf. I, I just I don't understand. How is there no yeah. drug policy here? I thought there was one. And you got oh, people like Randy Orton that got in trouble like a year ago for for taking illegal substances. He gets in trouble. He got what did he get suspended like sixty days? He got in trouble twice, didn't he? I think so. Yeah, and and he's he's caused some trouble in the back. I, I hear he's had a bad reputation with some of the divas in the back, but but, but it's okay. Jinder Mahal, you can take some steroids. All right, man, you can Steroid. knock out the best talent. It's all right. <laughs> Let's just say that's the reason why they traded him the SmackDown Live. They're like, oh, we're booting you. You're out of here. I would have loved him to knock out Mojo Rawley over Finn Balor. As much as, <laughs> as poor, oh, poor Mojo Rawley, he's just I don't, they're going to build him up with this uh, Andre the Giant thing for about a year now. It's going to be really god awful. But anyways, um, this, oh man, I mean, I, I don't want. I mean, I hope I'm, this isn't. We might as well get this out of the way. This isn't much of a spoiler, but this is the second time that Rob Gronkowski has helped uh, Mojo Rawley oh, win a match. Oh, yeah. Is this how it's going to be from now on? Just Rob Gronkowski just going to just going to randomly <laughs> until appear, that uh, next matches? NFL season starts. Oh up, my just, god! Just Mojo Rawley, <laughs> Mojo Rawley is going for the uh, the United States Championship against Kevin Owens. Here comes Rob Gronkowski. Throw yeah. a drink in Kevin Kevin Owens's face. Oh my gosh! His finishing move, the drink oh, to the face. <laughs> drink to the face. Uh, anyways, um, uh, you know what, we'll do, I'll do tweets after, I want to actually talk about the, the, the Superstar Shake Up before we, uh, get into the, the tweets, because there's actually a lot of good tweets this week, 
Um, mm-hmm. So we'll do an overview of the shakeup. And guys, this is uh, not with Cobra Cappy. If you're just tuning in now, Cobra Cappy unfortunately has exams this week and has to study a lot. So that's all obviously okay. So I got uh, Michael Chow, Michael Chow TV. He's also got his own uh, podcast going. So go check him out on Spreaker. He's also got some future things tied in with YouTube coming up this year. So go give him a follow, guys. And he's our special co-host for today. Thank you. Thank you. And what's up? We'll do the Superstar Shake-Up Overview. Um, so, first of all, just go over what superstars move from what brand to what brand. And I'll start off with SmackDown Live over to Raw. So, we had The Miz go over, Dean Ambrose, Apollo Crews, which was announced before Raw, uh, Kurt Hawkins, Bray Wyatt, Kalisto, Slater and Rhino, Alexa Bliss, and Mickey James. Um, Michael Chuck, what was your favorite out of all the people that moved over from SmackDown to Raw? Which move did you like the best? If I can be completely honest, I love SmackDown Live so much, I honestly did not want anyone to leave. But in my on- in my honest opinion, probably the biggest blow would probably have to be The Miz and Alexa Bliss. But uh, I got to tell you, Bray Wyatt, that took me by a huge surprise, though. Seriously, that took me by surprise, too, especially coming out during the Finn Balor thing and possibly teasing later down the line a, Finn, a Demon Balor and a Bray Wyatt feud. That's like, take my money already. Like, I know. Please, give me that. <laughs> um but that, that took me by surprise because I, I thought, well, this is what the confusing part is now with the, the shakeup. You're, you're getting SmackDown matches on a Raw pay-per-view coming up, and we got a, a match that was set for Backlash moved into Payback. Like, it just it's a lot of confusion. Like, is Payback a double-branded pay-per-view or is it a Raw pay-per-view? Uh, I know. I definitely got a lot of tweets saying they they don't understand what's going on. But honestly, it's I guess... It it may be kind of like Survivor Series, if you remember that. They had some uh, matches. I think it was um, was it SmackDown Live's Kalisto taking on Raw's, uh, was it D. Brian Kendrick? Yeah, and yeah. if Kalisto yeah. had won, he would have taken the title in the whole Cruiserweight division. Same thing with uh, Sammy, was it Raw's Sammy Zayn taking on uh, the, the Miz? Miz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so right, yeah. they're kind of doing this again, but they're doing, they're, they're kind of doing a bad job, probably because payback is coming up soon, so they're trying to jam in as much information they as they waited. can they should yeah they should have they payback should have been the beginning of next month not in three weeks after wrestlemania mm. we, we always made fun of smackdown getting no time to build for pay-per-views but now raw's literally got no time and they had a shake-up in between it so that they really payback's going to be the most confusing pay-per-view of the year and i thought that was fast lane but now <laughs> payback's just gonna be just as bad <laughs> they'll have better matches Probably. but it'll just be just as bad <laughs> Oh man, definitely, yeah. definitely confused with the whole title situation because they're basically saying that Raw could perhaps get both the Universal and WWE Championship. And do they have anything on the SmackDown side? No, I think no matter what, they're saying that the United States Championship is going to SmackDown no yeah. matter what. But they're and it didn't they're kind of if Kevin yeah. Owens is actually signed because if Kevin Owens loses, does that I mean he's not on SmackDown? Because Daniel Bryan said the winner of that match will be contracted to SmackDown. Yeah, I don't understand. Does so. that mean Kevin? That means you didn't just trade for Kevin Owens? Like, they didn't even <laughs> clarify anything. <laughs> Probably the most simplest way to clarify this is basically the United States champion is going to uh, SmackDown. So whoever's United States champion after Payback is going to SmackDown, and whoever loses uh, is basically going to Raw. Mm. So wh- whoever's the champion, United States champion, they're going to SmackDown Live, and whoever's not United States champion at the end of Payback, they're going to Raw. So in my head before this, I'm like, okay, so this new evolution is not happening. But then now you say that, um, maybe it does happen. Maybe actually Kevin Owens loses the match mm-hmm. and goes back to Raw, and they actually do this whole new evolution thing, and they feud the Shield because now all three members of the Shield are over there, and they're all baby faces. So maybe we ha- actually have that th- th- this this rumored factions facing each other. But who knows? Who knows right now? Right now, it's the most confusing time in the WWE. <laughs> and we're all trying to make sense of it. But again, when we're trying to make sense of it, a million theories come out, and we just don't know. We just got to, you know, play with the cards we're dealt, and we'll see what happens after payback, oh. I guess. <laughs> um, let's get into the Raw superstars that moved over from Raw to SmackDown Live. <laughs> uh, Shiny Stars. Rusev, or ex- no, I can't even call them the Shining Stars anymore. Apparently, I read on Twitter that they're uh, going back to the Epico and Primo gimmick, which is fucking fantastic if they do. 
The Shining Stars gimmick is the worst one of them all. I hate that gimmick. It's terrible. It, oh, man. I just didn't like the whole pamphlet thing. No, <laughs> check, they, check out the whole pamphlet thing, then it, it could yeah. it, it's good. I actually like them. They're, they're like two C-level Alberto Del Rios put yeah. in a tag team. So. People are saying that they need to bring Carlito back and have like a triple faction with them. They can also yeah. feud with the New Day that are now over there. So you get Shining Stars, New Day moving over, Rusev and Lana, Charlotte, Tamina, Sin Cara, Sami Zayn, uh, HGH Mahal, Kevin Owens, and yeah, that's, that's the the list there for Raw going to SmackDown. Um, obviously, my favorite going over is Kevin Owens. That that was probably the best opening of SmackDown I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and, but a clean shaven Kevin Owens, clean that shaven, yeah. Ooh, that that threw me <laughs> off guard in the the gray and blue suit. I was like, Jesus Murphy, what is this? Oh man. It's almost like Shane and Daniel Bryan said, like, uh, we'll take Kevin Owens, but he has to shave his beard yeah. first. Yeah. Take Daniel him over Bryan's here. Like, I, had to, I was made to shave my beard because I retired. There you go. <laughs> Kevin Owens has got to shave his beard. <laughs> but they had a pretty good talkie smack episode, too, with Kevin Owens on there. Um, guy basically saying, like, you know, I, I don't need opportunity. I know you guys call this this land of opportunity, but I think that's bogus. And Kevin Owens went on and said that uh, – I don't make opp- or I make my own opportunities. I do things my own way, and I thought it was a pretty good heel promo by Kevin Owens on Talking Smack. So, Kevin Owens, ah, oh, God, man, I don't know. I can't. I love for him to be on SmackDown, but again, w- with that whole theory with Payback, he might even go back over to Raw, which I'm cool with. If they do that whole new Evolution faction, no, I'm all for that. Um, but other than Kevin Owens, uh, I really liked Sami Zayn. Yeah, I gotta say it, Sami Zayn. We've been saying this for like what? Half year we've been wanting Sami Zayn on SmackDown. It's finally happened, and it's kind of got overshadowed by all the other moves. But people, think about it: Sami Zayn is on SmackDown, where we always wanted him to be. Finally, <laughs> I know it, it was. Kind of, it, it's kind of funny because on Raw, if you remember, they had a segment where Sami Zayn was talking with Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle saying, "Oh, you're such a good superstar," and <laughs> Kurt was basically like almost talking him up, like Sami Zayn was going to stay on Raw. Right? But then I guess something happened. So and he, and he won maybe, out this week. He won his way to SmackDown. <laughs> he did. So maybe Stephanie, a, called, maybe Stephanie called Kurt on the phone and said, what the heck are you doing? You better trade <laughs> Sami Zayn right now. Yeah, and then he has an unreal main event on SmackDown this week. I mean, again, we, we've been saying it for half a year. When Sami Zayn goes over to SmackDown, he'll be afforded more opportunities, and it looks like he's going to be part of the main title picture, which is fantastic. I mean, the main, the whole main title picture on SmackDown. I'm so excited for SmackDown Live going forward now um, with the, the plethora of talent they have now, and now they get Shinsuke and Ty Dillinger and just, oh, man. And now the rumor of DIY eventually going over to ha- help him uh, elevate that tag team. Um, Jesus. <laughs> SmackDown Live is going to be a great show in a couple months, man. It, I if can't not wait. already. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. those were the moves, and now I'm going to just do a quick overview of what both shows look like now, and then Michael Chow can chime in uh, with his uh, thoughts. Um, so, uh, we, real quick, we should probably say, I mean, I don't know if people cared that uh, there was a switch on the commentary table. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> uh, Corey Graves got his wish. He kind of teased it on Raw this week. <laughs> it's just, Byron, I hope like, you get drafted over to SmackDown, and he did. <laughs> They switched Byron Saxton for David Otunga. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. I actually want to see how Otunga and Graves work together next week. I wonder if it's going to be the same thing where Graves just rips on Otunga. But so far, JBL kind of like I, – I wonder if it's just because of the whole bully thing. He didn't really uh, make fun of o- uh, Byron that much this week. He kind of agreed with him with a lot of stuff. So uh-huh. I don't know if that's the reason why. But I think eventually when this blows over, we're going to see JBL just rip – rip otunga like <laughs> probably i was actually hoping that jbl would have been the one traded over to raw that way mar uh, ronaldo could come back but yeah yeah oh well interesting i uh, actually quickly in the show michael Chow, can you hear that in the background uh, i hear like a fan yeah no Maybe? it's my <laughs> it's actually my freaking uh my house heater <laughs> in the room i am in it's the same room as the house heater uh you know what I don't care if this is live, guys. Give me like five seconds. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, ten seconds. I always, I can always edit this out for YouTube, but um, I'm actually going to get off the mic here, Michael Chow. If you want to just talk about your thoughts um, on the Superstar Shake-Up, I'll be right back. Okay, I'll see what I can do. So let's see here. So, guys, unfortunately, let me see if I can actually get on 
with a speaker right now so I can actually talk with you guys. Let me get on speaker right now. But other than that, let's see here. What do you guys think of the Superstar Shake-Up? Um, let's see here. One thing real interesting, I mean, I wanted to bring up real fast. Uh, did you guys know that Sami Zayn going to SmackDown Live, he is the only superstar to not get jobbed, basically, on Raw. If you guys remember, let's see here. Kevin Owens, he's lost two weeks in a row. Jinder Mahal, he's lost two weeks in a row. New Day lost two weeks in a row. Charlotte has lost two weeks in a row. Sami Zayn is the only trade from Raw that went over that did not job for like two, you know, two weeks. But, you know, a lot of people are saying that um, there were a lot of Raw and SmackDown superstars on both shows because of the they, they were doing really last minute trades. So that's why a lot of people were basically on standby just in case mm-hmm. they were to get pulled. And I'm back. <laughs> and you're back. <laughs> But yeah, I do agree with that. Um, I think I have it sorted out. I think I turned it off. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, what was I talking about before? Oh, the overview. The overview, overview. of uh, Raw and SmackDown, the, basically what they look like now. Um, we'll start with Raw. So again, Mike, you can chime in whenever you need to. Um, okay. Their tag team division is stacked. 100% stacked now. You look at it from afar, you got the Revival, the Hardys, Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, who am I missing here off the bat? Cesaro and Sheamus. Who am I missing? Uh, Big Cass and Enzo. Oh, Enzo and Big Cass. So mm-hmm. you got a big four right there. Um, New else? Day leaving didn't really do much, right? Uh, God, sorry. Uh, right, the club? The club, yeah, that's it. That's one yes. for you. Mike, how do I forget the club? <laughs> Probably because they haven't been used so good the last couple. But now of weeks. I'm hoping they are because now their their yep. tag division is is booming, and I'm hoping I'm, as much as people don't like it, um, I'm hoping they actually do something with Golden Truth. <laughs> what the hell are they doing right now? I hear I don't watch Titus Catering. I don't watch the show, but I hear our Truth now does commentary for was it main event now? Really. Yeah, I, I, someone had told me that our, our troop is doing a good job on commentary, but I don't watch main events, so yeah, I didn't even know that show was still on. Main event. <laughs> exactly. I didn't know either. I didn't know who they would actually show. I thought they cut that out. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, but yep. their tight division is stacked. I love Raw's tight team division, man. It just looks so good. Um, exactly. Matt and Jeff Hardy are going to bring so much to the division. Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus. Uh, the club now and an Enzo and cast maybe getting her up to. I actually thought they were going to eventually go over to SmackDown, um, but it, it is just crazy how how much the division looks so much better now and so much better than that SmackDown Live's division. So I don't. I'm very intrigued for the, their tag team division. It's a lot better than what it used to be. In my my honest opinion. Definitely. Now they just need to know. They, they need to do it right. So what? They got the revival, the Hardy Boys. So. I mean, oh, man. Let's... The revival in the Hardy Boys is going to be on freaking believable. That's going to be so good. And that should be have... SummerSlam right there. They need to save that for SummerSlam. Right. I and mean, if they have this new faction being built, you know who knows. Um, I'm trying to think, there is no other tag teams. I'm I keep thinking that there's another tag team, and I'm forgetting. <laughs> and I think really think there's not. Um, but another thing that Raw looks good for is the women's division. It's very, very intriguing now um, with this, the switch up of Alexa Bliss and not Sasha Banks. You got Alexa and Sasha in the same show. And Corporate Cappy was irate about this. He really doesn't want to see these two girls go at it. But, you know, from my point of view, I actually want to see this feud. I cannot wait for that feud. Um, them battling for the women's title is going to be epic. You also got Bailey in there. You got Emma and Dana Brooke kind of doing their own thing. So you, you got other feuds. See, this is what we wanted them to do a couple of months ago was incorporate more feuds in the women's division. They're kind of doing that now with uh, with Emma and Dana Brooke uh, being former uh, protege uh, or uh, Dana Brooke being Emma's former protege in NXT. And now they kind of brought that to the main roster this week. And now you also added uh, Nia Jax, who's been a beast in that division. And with the returning Paige, that division is going to be insane. It is. I Definitely. Just, God, there's so much I can think about in that division. Oh, man. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I heard something because here's the thing. I don't watch a lot of NXT or at least back before it got popular. And I saw on Twitter that a lot of people are saying that uh, Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks have real life beef. Yeah. Culminating back from NXT. Something about Sasha accidentally breaking uh, Alexa Bliss's nose during a match or something. Yeah, I, re- so. I read that too. There's actually like a legit beef between these girls. So I'm uh, I'm hoping they bring it to the table. Uh, no pun in to that network <laughs> show, but I honestly hope they they incorporate that like Miz and uh, John Cena have incorporated into their feud heading into WrestleMania. I hope we get something like that. I'm hoping maybe by SummerSlam we get a one on one match between Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. It's just tough because we all want to see Sasha's heel turn. And if she mm-hmm. does turn heel, what do you do with this match? You can't turn Alexa face. That girl's perma heel. We don't want. No one's ever gonna get behind a, a face, Alexa Bliss. Unless she's gonna go back to the glitter. <laughs> no, no, please don't. <laughs> Unless she's a type of face, though. That's sort of like AJ. Like AJ Styles is not playing a face. He's kind of a tweener. But I know this week there's been showing signs of a face turn. But AJ Styles gets a good reaction, and obviously we know why. But as a heel, that's the only re- way I could see Alexa Bliss still being a heel, but getting that reaction. But that's almost impossible because the casual people hate the hell out of Alexa Bliss because of her attitude. And uh, uh, us, <laughs> you know, IWCB, we love it. <laughs> um, she she got, by the way, she got one of the loudest pops on Monday Night Raw right? when Alexa Bliss's music hit. Oh, my gosh. It was like they are in their home, her hometown or something. I love the way she played it off, too. He was like, I don't need approval from you guys, either. I just, Oh, man, that was great. <laughs> um, another thing from Raw, they're lacking in the top star department. That's for sure. They, it looks like they have more part-timers than anything else currently right now. As it looks right now, you got Chris Jericho and Brock Lesnar, and I don't know if you can consider Goldberg there. I don't think he's just gone now, so I don't even consider him part of the roster. Um, you got Seth Rollins, uh, Samoa Joe, and who else? Yep. That's it. Um, I guess that's it Roman right there. Reigns I mean, I'm Braun trying to... <laughs> but, like, we don't know how long Roman Reigns is going to be out for, if he's going to no-sell it and show up next time. <laughs> um, yeah. We have but... Braun Strowman right there. I mean, he's, in a way, kind of a top contender. Yeah. You need to... This is the, the time for... to put. And it looks like they're going to with how well they did with Braun Strowman this week. It looks like he's going to be pushed to that, uh, that top level. And... It, Depending on what they do with Brock Lesnar, I don't know. I, I, do we see Brock Lesnar before payback, or are we not going to see him till after? I've heard that he that this is basically it for Brock Lesnar. Like he's not going to be appearing for any more dates up until maybe after payback. So he's and not going to be appearing anymore. Champion. Oh my gosh! And he's a Universal Champ, absolutely. So garbage. Oh man, garbage. garbage. Absolutely. Um, something else. That's, if you look at Rod's no review, there's a possible Shield reunion in the works. They are all in the oh. same brand for the first time in a long time, and they're all baby faces. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe by Survivor Series. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, um, man. I, I keep telling you, this is – oh, man. If, if they reunite, and it'd be so crazy if when they reunite, Roman Reigns is the one that screws them over, that is oh good storytelling. They need to do that. That is the perfect way to finally so, uh, solidify Roman Reigns as, the, as a heel is he that they right. have a – yeah, exactly. Have a reunion, go up against Triple H's new Evolution group, and then whatever at the pay per view, have Roman Reigns screw them over, and there, there you go. Oh wow, I like that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so now let's look at SmackDown's an overview. Very, very stacked in the top superstar department. They are headed by Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens. Um, AJ Styles, like you got so many top people. Ty Dillinger is a possible top guy if they push him the right way. It looks like they are, they're going to push him for a top mid card. They've already had him two wins in a row. It kind of looks like he's going to be pushing, pushing. They're going to think they're just waiting for that mid card title to, um, get more organized. Maybe we see a, a mid card push maybe by SummerSlam for Ty Dillinger. Um, they got a lot of top guys and a lot of potential top guys on SmackDown. So I'm loving their main event or their main card. Uh, roster sheet right now. Uh, Mid card still has a lot of interesting uh, dynamics too. They have lots of room for superstars to grow, and we got lots of room for people from NXT to come up into the mid card uh, slot too for SmackDown. So I'm really liking that out of SmackDown, out of this shakeup. Um, oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Tag team division wise, SmackDown is weak. It it is. I mean, oh man. Uh... You're headed by. American Alpha and the Usos 
and then the new day like i guess but like uh, i don't know man unless you plan on pushing the ascension unless you plan on calling up diy and putting them on smackdown i got nothing you, you can't i can't get behind it this is gonna sound like well i don't know how they would do it but that Luke Harper and Eric Roman are still on the same show. Do they want to bring back those two as a duo? Because it's weird. Because I guess Luke Harper is maybe a face now. Oh well, yeah, that's but great. they're they're a team who I always wanted to win the tag team titles back when they made their debut, but they've never won it. It still surprises me that the well the wife well, I mean Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton technically won the tag titles, but I always wanted Luke Harper and Eric Rowan to win at least once. Right, and now like, do you call them the Wyatt family? <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, you had the club be the club on Raw and Styles still wear the club logo. You had, you know, cross brand branding. I, I don't know. I, it's going to be interesting to see. And now they get the Shining Stars or Epico and Primo. If they plan on using them right, it just it looks like the division kind of needs a few tweaks here and there. Again, Raw's is more stacked. And you have, you'll have more stuff to look forward to on Raw's tag team division than SmackDown. Because right now you're headed by AA and the Usos, and you can't just keep making them face each other week after week. Definitely. So we'll oh, see let's not forget. Let's for, let's not forget the brand new debut of the newest tag team, Mojo Raleigh and Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> and Brazongo. <laughs> and Brazongo. And they oh, gotta yep. get used properly too. So unless there's some plans, then you got you got some work to do in the SmackDown division. Uh, there, Dana Bryan, Shane McMahon. Uh, and as for their women's division, oh man, I guess this week spoke for itself. I kind of cringed when Tamina came out. I'm like, she can still wrestle. <laughs> I pff, okay. And Does that have... even count? Does that even count as a trade? She was never know. even a part of the brand extension. Like, how does right? that count as a trade when she wasn't even on Raw? As much as like, I kind of don't want my girl to go over there, but they need Paige. Paige needs to go over to SmackDown. Becky Lynch, your top girls on SmackDown are Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Naomi is, is just starting to, I mean, you can consider her as a top girl there. I think she needs a little bit more work. I think she's just, she's got pushed too in, into it too, fa- uh, too fast, in my opinion. I know she's worked hard for it, but I don't know. I still, it still doesn't feel like she's main, you know, the main girl on SmackDown right now. It doesn't feel like she should be the champion. Um, they need some work, though. Uh, I'm hoping uh, they left this open for the rumored Peyton Royce and Billy Kay to come up, or maybe even when Asuka finally loses the title and she gets called up, maybe SmackDown is uh, you know her name. And if people are saying on Twitter, like, oh my god, don't forget about Nikki Bella. I'm like, okay, I, I'm not forgetting about Nikki Bella, but she's not also in the best of health. <laughs> she's gone she's now because right of her neck injury again. You think she's going to be 100% coming back, or WWE is going to you know, push her even more when she comes back? She's going to be on more light duty than she was coming back recently the next time she comes back. And I can't believe I'm going to be bringing this up. Guys, please forgive me. There's also Eva Marie. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh boy! Boo! No oh, man, <laughs> I don't. No, please no. Uh, one thing I want to point out here in the chat, Greg pointed out when we were talking about uh, Brock Lesnar, he's like, "What happened to the champion? Must defend the championship at least once every thirty days. Everybody follow your rules." <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> or, or no, uh-huh. the part timers exempt from following the rules because you know they can take steroids too. Apparently. <laughs> Although I think Jinder Mahal is more of a full-time guy now, which doesn't make it even better because a full-time guy taking okay. steroids. You know what I would love to see them do is like Sheamus did this a long time ago where they actually try to do this rule that you had to defend the title in 30 days. And Sheamus went out. He said, okay, well, I have someone challenging me for my title. He goes, Zack Ryder. And Zack Ryder <laughs> came out. And then he broke kicked him. The match was only like three seconds, but it was basically Sheamus that. taking advantage of that uh, 30 day thing. So it'd be funny if Brock Lesnar came out and they said, oh, well, you have to do the 30 day thing. And then let me see here. I'm looking at the roster right now who they have. Let's say Bo Dallas comes out. Bo Dallas oh, comes out and he just suplexes him and he and he takes the win. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, they should do that on the pre-show. I would love that if Brock oh. Lesnar appears on the pre-show. And he oh, does man. that. Stop! <laughs> stop! The pre-show. <laughs> pre-show. Terrible. It'd be that'd be yeah. the best thing ever. Brock Lesnar on the pre-show, and he just I don't know kills Bo Dallas, and then there you go. That's your championship match. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I can get behind that. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the overviews for Raw and SmackDown. I mean, it, right now it's a confusing time. I guess maybe things will get clearer after payback. Maybe not. But uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I know they kind of wanted to shake things up a bit. Again, we we both agree it's a little bit too early. It kind of could could have kept going with what they have now. Um, especially with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, that's very confusing. I can't. I, I'll get into it in the SmackDown review. I hate Randy Orton as a WWE champion right now. It's, it oh does nothing gosh. for me. But uh, all right, now I'm gonna get into the tweets. And we are what 34 minutes in the show. Get to the tweets this is new. But you know, we had a good we had a good discussion. I like that. I like very that good discussion. Um, so get into your tweets, and uh, we'll start off with the uh, last year's fan of the month. Do you get your tweets read first? And oh my God, he doesn't have any tweets. Chucky Brown. Well, that's probably because he was at work. Yeah, he did say it in the in the chat. So he didn't have any tweets. I thought he did. We had a lot of tweets this week, so I got confused. Um, but Chucky Brown, I'll just give you a shout out then before I read the tweets. Chucky Brown won our Twitter fan of the month for March, ladies and gentlemen. That means that if you win Twitter fan of the month, you get your tweets read first in a shout out on every lowdown show. So congratulations to the March Twitter fan of the month in Juggy Brown Azazel YT on Twitter. So since he doesn't have any tweets this week, I'll just move into the fan of the month for February. Glorious Greg, who's currently listening right now, get into your tweets. At xgilly929, he puts, I'll give Raw a 9 and a SmackDown a 10. Both shows were good. And the shakeups each show had uh, were interesting. Can't wait to see what Sammy does on SmackDown. And if we get a Shield reunion on Raw, eventually, although I feel as the club should have gone to SmackDown. Yes. I think I, I think the club should have gone to SmackDown. I think a reuniting with AJ Styles would have been awesome. Um, the club would have benefited more from being with AJ on SmackDown and being a part of SmackDown Tag Division. How do you guys feel about the club not being moved? Well, I think this is a question to me and Cavi, but Michael Chow, you can chime in. Uh, I think it, it benefits in a way to help the Raw Tag Team Division. But then if you look at it from the other side of the fence, um, a, a team up with AJ Styles again would be sick and would be awesome for the AJ Styles character. I know he can pull his own, but I'd love to see a club reunion one day and uh, maybe get in the fourth member, Finn Balor, one day as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. That would have been so crazy if Finn Balor had went to SmackDown. or <laughs> Yeah, or definitely Finn Balor right now with uh, the club right now. But... Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I can understand why they didn't do it because AJ Styles just doing so good solo. So yeah. um, that may have been one of the reasons why they didn't kind of want to bring him back into a team. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, you know, I, I I like in I like to move on uh, both sides of the fence. You know, I understand why they kept them on Raw as tag team, but I would have loved them to go to SmackDown. So I'm I, I'm I'm all for it on both sides. Uh, another question from Glorious Greg. How do you think Miz will do on Raw? Also, I'm glad Rusev is on the blue brand with Lana. <laughs> uh, how do I think Miz will do on Raw? I'm hoping they do something good with him and not just bury his ass. So far, so good. I liked what he did on Raw this week, so we'll see. Um, I definitely like what he did on Raw, except that he lost. But yeah, he <laughs> lost. Yeah. Oh, boy. So I would love him to. I would love to see if he does this like gimmick where like everyone who he's in a feud with he impersonates, not I, like okay, a better. Someone told uh, me that the other day, and I'm like, oh my god, that's actually a pretty good idea. <laughs> Maybe, or he just keeps uh, making fun of John Cena over and over again. I don't oh know. man, can you can you imagine if his next feud is uh is against Dean Ambrose, which looks like they're going toward, and then him and Maurice basically impersonate oh, Dean Ambrose god. and Renee Young. Oh my god, and they ju- they just. I mean, I don't want to spoil something, but something just happened to the relationship with uh, Dean Ambrose and uh, Renee Young. They are yeah. definitely <laughs> going to make fun of that. We'll see. I actually like that. Uh, Glorious Greg also puts, fuck gender for giving Balor a concussion, <laughs> and thank you, Braun, for the assault on hashtag no man games. It was glorious and hashtag... <laughs> ah, I got to get the hashtag roar in there. My God, I can't believe I agreed to do this. <laughs> but uh yes i can't believe, i i think fire jinder mahal should be a more trending hashtag and fire jbl right now because i don't think people will actually have clicked in yet that finn balor is back on the shelf after he just came back <laughs> like poor guy man he could boost the raw division so much but now he just gets bad luck it's that curse that, we we're talking about on twitter i know right i mean big by the way big props to finn balor this is the second time he's in a way, gotten injured during a match, and he actually finished the match. That's true. Wow. 
Finn Balor, man, resiliency beyond belief. <laughs> uh, next tweets, Mason Dunbar at Dunbear Vlogs. I thought both were spectacular. I gave it both 10 out of 10. The shakeups were great. I can't wait to see what they do with them. Interesting. 10 out of 10 for both. Mm-hmm. We'll see, Mason Dunbar. I have different ratings for both shows this week, but thank you for your opinions. Next, we got Chuck Wilson at C Wilson 3124. <laughs> Good old Chuck. Good old Chuck. Uh, he puts Braun versus Brock has to happen. <laughs> Fuck off Reigns. Having Strowman ragged all the beast is best for business. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Braun Strowman manhandle Brock Lesnar. I think the crowd gets so behind Braun Strowman in a Braun Strowman Brock Lesnar match. That'd be oh insane. man! Did you hear how much they cheered for Braun? Like he was basically every time he did something else to Braun Strowman, they were cheering like, "Oh my gosh!" The, the, it's the part one, the one scene they're chanting, "You deserve it" to Roman Reigns. I was like, wow, oh, "This my crowd God. is savage." <laughs> Oh, man. There, th- by the way, there is something crazy that just happened involving that segment and a petition, but I'll, I'm gonna get, I'm, I'll probably get into that later on when we do uh, headlines, headlines. But Oh, yeah. I oh, can't wait yeah. for that. We got to uh, definitely talk about that. Yep. So next set of tweets, Irrelevance at Forlorn on Twitter. Well, Raw was a mix. Most good, most bad. Ambrose is now the top star on Raw being the top title holder. Miz... Poor Miz, because he doesn't, want to include, <laughs> he doesn't want to include Brock Lesnar. I understand. Um, <laughs> the Revival's shirt were amazing. Ah, oh, they had a new. Sh- oh yeah, that's right. They had their own uh, their own created shirts. Those are probably be in the shop soon. Um, and I'm just confused and concerned for the new Raw stars. Hopefully they'll be fine. Hopefully, the best part of Raw was my boy. Oh god, I gotta do it. Ah. Uh, <sighs> Why do I do these things? <laughs> um, yeah, so his boy Braun Strowman <laughs> killing Reigns and becoming the top baby face of the company. Congrats, Braun. Yes. Uh, so far, he is the top baby face on Raw. <laughs> Except for, I don't know, Rollins is up there too. And I guess now Ambrose. Uh, for SmackDown, it was a better show all around. I was invested in every segment except one. Obvious which one that is. The winner of the shakeup goes to SmackDown. All the picks were great. Obvious the club were, wouldn't join seeing how Styles looks to be turning face. Oh, so he thinks the club not going over is because it looks like they're turning Styles' face and the club are obvious heels. Okay, I see that. I like that. Um, thing I'm looking forward to the most on SmackDown is New Day, KO, and Nakamura on Talking Smack. Well, Raw gets a 7 and SmackDown gets a 9. Okay. Mm. Relevance, thank you for your tweets this week. Put this over here. All right, next set of tweets. Oh, God. The crazy storyline machine Prince Jones. Oh, boy. WFS Prince Jones. Raw was fine. To me, it felt a regular Raw with a bit of surprises. The only great thing was that motherfucking Drifter. Oh, my God. He's in love with the Drifter. (laughs) Uh, SmackDown was great. One of the best SmackDowns of the brand split. The main event was great. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Jesus, 10 out of 10. You guys now are so is generous. it is Prince Jones being sarcastic this time? This is probably like one of the most un sarcastic that Prince Jones has ever been. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Prince Jones, you'll have to clarify <laughs> this when you uh when you hear this. Please tell me if you were being sarcastic or not, because I can't tell at all. Um Next set of tweets, Casey Salvis at Salvis ninety four. SmackDown is still the A show. Awesome show. Happy Garbage Reigns is still on Raw and Braun is a monster. <laughs> garbage Reigns. He calls him Garbage Reigns. Garbage. <laughs> Raw, 7 out of 10 because of Braun. SmackDown, 9 out of 10. Love the Styles is still on the A show. Yes, we all do love you still on the A show. Uh, next set of tweets actually comes from someone, Michael Chow, that you're replacing today. Corporate Cappy. Oh, wow. At least he's, he, he's on the show in spirit. Yeah, and he's got his, uh, his tweets here. Can't even rate this week. Show I can't even rate this week's shows because they're basically a clusterfuck. Yes, you were right there, Corp Cappy. With so many people being shuffled around everywhere. The format of the whole shakeup was extremely lazy without even announcing trades. Kyle, was hashtag NHL Trade Center better than WWE brand shakeup? Oh, God. <laughs> I guess it's more organized, but it's more... The NHL Trade Center is more boring. They, they hype NHL Trade Center... 
like this trade deadline day every single year in the NHL. Like it's the biggest day and you have to watch it. And when me and Corver Cappy did an all day podcast on that, literally we waited like four hours before the first trade came through. We were sitting there <laughs> talking about random shit for four hours until the first trade came through. So I can't really give my honest opinion there, Cappy, on which one was better. Um, they both were clustered. That's all I got to say about that. Next tweet's from Cappy. He puts, Braun just became the biggest baby face of the PG era. As for the <laughs> shakeup in the women's division, I have no words other than, <laughs> fuck my life. <laughs> and as you guys, if you guys don't know, his two favorite women wrestlers right now are Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. And now they're on the same roster. And now they probably will be facing each other down the line. Um, Gorbachev, he puts, apologies for the absence it's the final week and a half of school, and hashtag corporate deadlines and exams have to be put first. Have a fun show, guys. Thank you, Corporate Cappy. Thank you. Good luck on your exams. Yeah, yeah good luck. Next set of tweets, Tony Mercer. At Reprem, why not? I thought the shakeup caught a lot of people off guard with some of the moves. Bray to Raw surprised me the most. Yes, it did with us too. Now getting to the shows. Raw wasn't bad. Or Raw wasn't a bad show and a main ev- a fun main event. The downs were a sloppy Nia Jax match. Oh, my God. Wait to review that. <laughs> and Finn getting concussed. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. There's a generous rating right there by Tony Mercer. SmackDown was a great show. KO, Zayn, Charlotte, New Day, and Rusev are great additions to the roster. The main event was great as well. 8.5 out of 10. Yes, the point five. They all come out with ratings. <laughs> Where do you guys get your point five from? At least they didn't do what the uh, point two four. Oh my point... god, Cobra Cappy loses his mind <laughs> when someone does like point six eight two six nine. Um, I got my earphones mixed up here. Here we go. Uh, next set of tweets: Colin at Gamma New One, Raw a nine, SmackDown a nine point five nine point five. Just disappointed there was no drifter on SmackDown just drifting around. See, I wanted that to happen. I tweeted that. I'm like, I would love for him to just appear on both shows and just drift around every goddamn week. <laughs> I would love that. It was hilarious. Um, oh, yeah. I feel like the shakeup was great and should work it work in both shows' favor. Mm, we'll see. Raw <laughs> Wyatt versus Balor in the future and Sami Zayn on SmackDown. So awesome. Thank you, Colin, for your tweets as always. And the last set of tweets comes from Joshy J, Joshy underscore J on Twitter. Really close this week. Enjoyed both shows, but the SmackDown main event wins it. SmackDown 8.5 and Raw 8. <laughs> Definitely scared for Bray being on Raw. Love Rusev moving to SmackDown, but wish the club would have gone over instead of the New Day. So, again, here's someone uh, who wishing the new or the club going over to SmackDown, which is, I am agree with it too. I, I Again, I'm on both sides of the fence. Um, it looks like the new evolution is on hold for the moment with KO and Joe being split. I so want to see this new evolution. I don't know what anyone else thinks. I actually want to see this happen because I'm intrigued to see if they add Pete Dunn or not because I know of Pete Dunn's past, and he'd be a great addition to this new evolution. That That's going to be like the most dominant faction in a long time. And if they go up against the Shield, God, give me just take my money again. Just take all of it. Oh man, but then if the shield has Roman Reigns, oh, well, yeah. say goodbye yeah. to Kevin Owens, say goodbye yeah. to Samoa Joe. <laughs> no man gains. That's why we call him that. Oh. Raw Roman <laughs> always wins. Um, I a sip of drink there. All right. So speaking of Raw, Roman always wins. Let's get another review from Raw. Let's get another review. Yeah, Raw live from the Nassau Coliseum this week in Long Island, New York. Um, I saw a hilarious sign, and if you guys know hockey, you guys would laugh at this. It said, bring back the Islanders, who recently, a couple years ago, moved over to Brooklyn. So, And people were pissed. And now people that are in Brooklyn, and the Islanders are pissed that they moved to Brooklyn because they can't take care of an arena properly. So there's a big whole stupid spiel with, with that. I don't really want to get into it because, you know, I don't care a shit about the Islanders. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Raw this week. Uh, interesting. Raw, again, with the shakeups and everything. So, uh, opening segment, we start out with John Cena's music hitting, and that actually took me by surprise. At first, I wasn't thinking about The Miz at all. I heard John Cena's music, I'm like, oh my god. Like, really? They actually made John Cena go over to Raw? I'm like, ooh. But then we get The Miz and Maurice come out dressed up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. I love it. The Miz cutting another promo on John Cena and Nikki Bella in the ring. Um... 
saying that they should take advantage of the superstar shakeup and come over to Monday Night Raw. And out comes Dean Ambrose. So there's two moves right off the bat. And Ambrose acting like he wouldn't know anybody on Raw. And thank goodness that John Cena and Nikki Bella are here. So he's acting like there. it's actually is John Cena and Nikki Bella. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the Miz tells Dean that they're actually the Miz and Maurice. <laughs> Ambrose chimes in, oh. Well, in that case. And it gives him a dirty tease. Oh, boy. <laughs> He goes, oh, wow, I didn't know. You know, I bet you that when Miz took off his hat and Nikki took off or, or Maurice took off her wig, I bet you the fans who thought that the uh, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns thing was actually happening was probably surprised as well. Like, yeah. Oh, wow, what? That's not the real John Cena and Nikki? What? Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. Oh, yeah, and the people that actually thought it was uh, – you know, didn't see the camera cut. I saw it. I noticed uh, it. The camera cut when it. Roman was on the, the stretcher there. Um, mm-hmm. for, we saw it. We all saw it. They didn't see it. But anyways, um, I thought that was a great opening segment. That was hilarious. Um, Dean Ambrose, is, his character just speaks for himself. He's a lunatic, like pun intended. Um, but I, I like the I like the additions. Ambrose was actually shocking for me too. I didn't think he'd move until losing the title. That really threw me off guard. So I'm like, okay, so both minor titles are on – Raw and are they making it obvious or are they purposely making it obvious that Kevin Owens is going to go over or are they doing this on purpose? I was really confused. And then later on, they booked them in a match against each other. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. It, it threw me in a loop already. And I mean, this right, this right here sounds like this because they were talking about like last last minute trades. I mean, I this feels like a last minute trade to me because if not, they might as well just had Baron Corbin win the title at WrestleMania. Yeah, well, the whole thing was last minute. Apparently, Vince didn't think of the shakeup until the afternoon before Raw, like before uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. The Raw after WrestleMania that afternoon, he that's when Vince McMahon thought of the shakeup. That's when it. That he's like, okay, we're gonna do it right now, and I'm gonna go out there and announce it. I'm like, oh my god, way to think about it. <laughs> But I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens again with the shakeup in the upcoming month. Uh, we'll move on. We got the New Day versus the Revival. And uh, the New Day coming out with a blow up doll of Kofi Kingston. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kofi Kingston got hurt last week. And he's out for about a month. We, it's, uh, he, had, he shattered his ankle or something like that. I think it was his ankle. Yeah, his ankle or foot? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, it was some type of injury, and I know that the uh, the what happened last week after the match with the revival that was kind of a way to write him off TV. Ah, uh, okay, so it was it was his ankle because uh, the revival came out with shirts that said "Rest in Peace Ice Cream Cart," and yeah, and uh, Dawson was wearing a shirt that said "We Broke Kofi's Ankle." <laughs> we broke. <laughs> uh, so the revival come out. Our new day came out and they were talking about the revival kicking over their cart and the injury to Kofi and you know they kind of want their revenge on the revival. So this was actually a really good match. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the revival are definitely uh, reviving, pun intended, the division. And <laughs> new day showing more in ring technique. I thought it was pretty cool. But even though now they're being jumped over to SmackDown, it sucks. Kind of if they they're already showing improvement, but now they're getting traded over to SmackDown. Hopefully that transitions into helping helping their division out. But. I liked the match this week. I really, really liked it. There was that awesome spot at the end where Woods jumped off the top rope right into the Shatter Machine. Like, crazy-ass spot. And the Revival, soon to be champs, I'm guessing, man. A, a feud with the Hardys would be insane. The Revival versus the Hardys, that's a dream match I want to see. Definitely, definitely. They definitely look like naturals on Raw. They definitely look like they definitely belong there, and they should have been called up like a while ago. Right, right. Everyone's saying that, and I actually see it now. Um, so I'm loving it. The rival, man. Reviving the Raw Tag Team division. Uh, we move on here to a backstage segment, and uh, it had to do with the Cruiserweights. And actually, I think they did a pretty good job here. I, I know the crowd wasn't really into it. I can hear them in the background being goons. But for me, who loves the 205 Live division, I got really. I, I thought this backstage promo was really well done, and it made me get more interested in it. They had Neville getting interviewed, who got interrupted by TJ Perkins. And uh, Neville basically tried to convince TJ that uh, he's the only one to respect him around here and that what TJ is doing is not going to get him far. And kind of like TJ is kind of like thinking about it going, oh, okay, this is weird that, you know, the top heel and the, the, the so-called king of the cruiserweights is saying that I'm the only one to respect him or respect me. And then Aries comes out of nowhere. <laughs> God, guys, guys, hilarious. He got so much charisma. I love Austin Aries. He comes in. 
And he tries to tell TJ that he's lying. You're actually going to believe this guy, the the so-called king of the cruiserweights that lies all the time and basically just doesn't care and lie. He's just trying to bring TJ down. And then as Neville walks away and TJ walks away, TJ's looking very, very confused. And I'm like, okay, so I kind of see where this is going. It looks like they're going to turn TJ Perkins heel, which is really shocking. Because like the last couple of weeks with him coming out with the glasses and putting him on kids and look like playing a lot to the, the you know, when, when a character plays a lot to the kids in their entrance, you don't think they're going to try and heal anytime soon. And TJ Perkins, wow, man. Uh, pfft. This week was awesome. And this whole backstage segment, I loved it. That's the one thing I want to say. They did a really good job with this as much as anyone didn't see it or didn't really pay attention to it. I really liked it. Yeah, they definitely needed like maybe a second tier uh, heel in the 205 live division. And I think TJ Perkins, he could definitely do that. Guy's so. insane. People don't give him enough credit, I don't think, man. The guy is an incredible performer. His in-ring technique is amazing. Um, people loved him when he was in TNA and he was as uh, suicide for a bit. Um, and then that eventually turned into uh, Austin Aries and had the whole thing down there. These guys have a history. TJ Perkins and Aries have a history down TNA, so... Uh, I, I'm loving that they're kind of incorporating it this week too. So they moved on from this and we got, oh God, Kurt Hawkins in the ring. Oh, my Lord. I can't believe he got drafted to Raw. But you know what? <laughs> it kind of helps because, you know, Raw has a lot of filler space. So maybe Kurt Hawkins just be the filler gap. <laughs> but this was a terrible filler segment. Because oh, he's, he's out there asking for like the welcoming parade and Big Show comes out. Oh my god. It just KOs him. All right. The, and then no, leaves. That's it. This did nothing for me. I, I don't care. I think we just move on from this. I don't want to really want to talk about any more of this. They they seriously could have used this segment for someone else. I mean, they right? had Apollo Crews. He didn't even appear on actual television. This would have been the best time for Apollo Crews to come out here. Yeah, no, we give him a WWE.com segment. Ooh, thanks. Oh, <laughs> you know, everyone tunes into that. Because um, we, we still got to push the big show. We still got to push him. He, he might still have a match with Shaq next year. Oh, uh. poor him. He didn't have his WrestleMania match. Oh, we should we should have him come out there and just knock out somewhere. Kurt Hawkins, you don't get out in the ring for us. You got to get Big Show to punch someone. And <laughs> he, they did a bad job of selling Kurt Hawkins went down a little bit too early, and Pig Show couldn't get his fist all the way up, and it punched him in the stomach, and Kurt Hawkins <laughs> acted like he got punched in the head. I'm like, oh, God. Even worse. Anyways, we're moving on from that crap. I'm done talking about it. Um, Austin Aries versus TJ Perkins. So we could have had this match before the filler crap, but we didn't get it till now. And Neville's on commentary. I got a thing with superstars on commentary. I don't know what it is. I just... I feel like it takes away from the match the whole time. Like it's almost like the co- the commentators concentrate more on the guy on commentary than what's going on in the ring. So I, I have a thing with people on commentary. It should just be for the commentators, leave the superstars off it unless they're not going to talk for the whole time. It's just, that's just me though. No, I definitely agree. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's sometimes it's kind of weird because when you see a superstar that does guest commentary, you can honestly say, "Oh, you know what? This person's good on the mic, but I guess it was just a script they're reading because they're not so good on commentary table right now." <laughs> right. So Neville on commentary for this. This is a decent match. I actually really like this. Um, but at one spot in the match, where Neville came down to the ring and distracted Aries. Um, when Aries turned around towards T.J. Perkins, he was playing possum. And actually won via roll-up. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then you had Aries and TJ Perkins looking at each other. Like, okay, okay, I feel you, dog. I feel you. And uh, as Aries is talking to Neville and, like, bickering at him on the ramp, TJ Perkins attacks Aries from behind. And we get a heel turn, I guess, for TJ Perkins. I was not expecting the attack after the match, but, man, I do love that. Uh, I, I love that de- detonation kick, and I oh, think he... My God. I think he used that move on uh, Jack Gallagher on 205 Live, so I guess this is one of his new finishers. But, man, love that move. So I, I love it, too. And I actually love the heel turn by TJ Perkins. I can get behind it. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with his theme song and stuff. I don't know if they're going to change that up. His theme and his whole entrance is is so babyface. It's nowhere near <laughs> Um, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe he they, comes out as Neville's protege. You know? Yeah, maybe they might do it like Neville because you notice how Neville he has that cool new music, but then halfway through his music, it cuts to his old theme music. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they yeah. do something like that. Oh, I'm intrigued, we'll man. And, and, and 
maybe it's got to tie into Perkins and how much of a nerd he is in real life. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Maybe my, oh, it, I think it was Cappy or someone else told us like, oh, maybe he'll come out to like the Bowser theme and like Bowser will be on the <laughs> Titan Tron or something. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be funny. Um, oh, yeah. But Neville, uh, they, him and Teacher Bergens kind of have like a mutual stare down after this too. So interesting heel turn here. Love it. We'll move on. We got Seth Rollins coming out to the ring. And looks like he's 100% fine. I The work the work is real. God damn it, it was a work. I knew it. <laughs> we haven't heard anything about injuries after this. He kind of played to it this week on Raw. But when have we done? Have we heard anything about doctors checking up on him? They haven't had any backstage things going on about this. Like, he had this great 25-minute WrestleMania match, and he's suddenly okay after that? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it's a work. It was the biggest work. We got worked. I remember a couple of weeks before WrestleMania, they had that stupid doctor come on TV, yeah, and there he was talking was about it. He was like, oh, I don't think Seth Rollins is going to make it to WrestleMania. He looks fine now, so... Yeah. Oh. Anyways, so he talks about his WrestleMania match with Triple H, saying how uh, him and the crowd slayed the King of Kings, and he thanks the fans. He says he's got some scores to settle here on Raw with Samoa Joe, and wants his shot at the Universal title, but he does talk about uh, causing Steph to go through a table, and he shows everyone the Titan Tron... And basically, it looks like it's going to be affecting him to even stay on Raw. He might be getting over to SmackDown. Crowd chanting, thank you, Seth. When they showed the, the video of Seth going through the table. <laughs> it says uh, he's not going to leave Monday Night Raw without a fight. Out comes Kurt Angle. Huge reaction. Man, this guy's going to have a huge reaction every single week comes out. He's going to be like Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Everywhere they go, when they come out to the ring, they get a massive reaction. And he's well-deserved. Kurt Angle is a uh, Hall of Famer now, and he gets he deserves all the attention he's going to get. And hopefully we see him in the ring sometime in the future, which we are, because he's getting trying to get cleared to wrestle again. So that's going to be interesting to see who he faces. Um, I'm actually hearing... Rumors and you know a little chatter here and there. It's actually going to be Samoa Joe his next match. I can't if they do that. I'm, I'm fucking all for it, man. Two submission I, I, specialists. I heard a rumor that uh, one of his opponents might be Triple H because if you guys remember a long time ago, storyline wise, Kurt Angle and Stephanie kind of had a thing going on. So when Stephanie comes back, it's Stephanie working with Kurt Angle who kind of had a thing before, and. We'll see. If they flirt around, it could lead to a potential feud between Kurt Angle and Triple H. I wouldn't be surprised if that's at next year's WrestleMania, Kurt Angle versus Triple H. Yep. Uh, Triple H, guy still wants to wrestle once a year at WrestleMania, so Kurt Angle, I can see it. I can see it. And if me and Cappy are going, we're going to see it live next week or next year, so give me a treat to see. Uh, Angle reassures Rollins here. As long as he's GM, he's got, uh, he, he's got a home here on Raw, and... That was basically it. He just reassured Rollins that, you know, he's going to stay here on Raw. Raw. The crowd goes nuts. Rollins is happy. And then Seth, Samoa Joe ambushes Rollins from behind here. And even Angle tries to get in the ring and separate it really awkwardly. kind of looks like they – He it's almost like in his mind, Kurt Angle, he knew he can't really get that physical until he passed the test. So he kind of just breaks him up a little bit and then backs away. You know what I mean? He, he, he gets in there and then backs away really quick. It's almost like you can tell he, he was holding back a lot. Um Definitely, yeah. I, 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 for some reason, I thought that something was going to happen to Kurt because it would have been crazy because you know how Kurt's saying that he's safe here, that Seth Rollins is safe on Raw. But can you imagine if Seth Rollins, say, went for like a super kick but accidentally nailed Kurt Angle? Oh, dude. Then he's off to a bad start. Yeah, I, I would have loved to see that too. Yeah, good good freaking uh, creative juice there. That's awesome. There you um, go. <laughs> so then Rollins ends up super kicking Joe out of the ring instead. <laughs> and then Joe kind of teases coming back in and then walks away as a normal heel would. And uh, Smojo kind of yells at him from the Rams like, oh, you watch for next time. Next time will be worse. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we move on here. <laughs> we got Charlotte versus Nia Jax. Actually, it was actually a decent match. I was hope I was hoping for a cringe-style match. I, I've seen people give a lot of heat to this match. Um, I actually didn't mind it. There's that really cool moonsault spot, which kind of looked like Charlotte got injured. But because uh, the way her and how her knee buckled, but apparently she's all right. I I went searching on and on on Tuesday to see if she was going to be injured, and nope. And and she appeared on SmackDown, so she's ready to go. Um, there was actually a point in the match. I don't know if you saw it that Nia Jax went for a shoulder breaker, but instead of getting uh, Charlotte's shoulder, she actually got her head. 
So oh, they yeah. actually look pretty bad. So she's just so Ooh. stiff, man. Nia Jax is <laughs> so stiff in the ring. Like, ugh. as much as I give her credit for being in there and doing her thing, it's, she's a little bit stiff, man. It's tough to wrestle with the the women that are in the division now who are more wrestling technique based than Nia Jax, who's just like the dominant force, kind of like a Braun Strowman of the division. Um, but Nia Jax just squashes Charlotte after the the moonsault thing. I thought we would end in a DQ or something, but uh, I guess it's definitely a goodbye to Charlotte because she ends up on SmackDown the next night. Yep. That that ending was kind of weird. It was, like, really slow. It's like, uh, I think, like, I don't know, Charlotte Charlotte was in the corner for, like, a couple of minutes, and then Nia Jax is some, uh, Simone drops her. Yeah. Like, that ending was, uh, but. Yeah, it was a little, yeah. little cringy, but uh, the match, oh, it was decent. It was decent. I'll change it from good to decent. Um, <laughs> moving on. Oh God. Oh, I gotta talk about it. And it, it makes me sad. But we got uh, HGH Steroid Mahal versus Finn <laughs> Balor. <sighs> I can't believe how much this guy gets away with. It really mind boggles me. And now they they're putting Balor back on the shelf again. Ugh. This is not like this is not an accident. This was carelessness by Jinder Mahal. You go back and look at the tape. I looked at it maybe four or five. Actually, I think more than that. I replayed it more, I think, at least 10 or 11 times and went back and seen if Jinder Mahal could could have done something. And he could have. It's because he's too aggressive, and that's the steroids. When you're on steroids, you can't really control yourself. You get more aggressive in, like, your workouts and stuff, and you kind of, like, almost lose, like, your sense of strength. Like, you, you don't know exactly how hard you're going. And... He raged at that one point and knocked Finn Balor on the side of the head with an elbow. And he could have let up, but it almost looked like he went full-on Jinder Mahal. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where people can argue and say that, okay, it, you know, it, it happens in wrestling. Shit like this happens. It's not, no, it's not anybody's fault. In my honest opinion, after looking at it 10 or 11 times, Jinder Mahal could have done a lot to... Uh, I guess, uh, stop himself or, you know, let a uh, little bit loose because... I went and looked closely. He did say sorry to Finn Balor after trying to pick him up after that because he, he screwed up. He screwed up. And you know what? He could have done better. I give zero sympathy to, to Jinder Mahal because I think he should he could have done a lot more to prevent hitting Finn Balor in the head here. It's just my opinion. Definitely. I mean, man, if you saw Finn Balor's face, he was definitely really like red and scratched up because I'm I'm pretty sure like after he took the elbow to the face, I'm pretty sure he like really fast lost consciousness because his his head went straight down like really really he was, fast. He was busted open. He was bleeding. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, uh, I mean, it's I'm, touchy. It's a touchy subject. I mean, one thing. It's it's weird, but I mean we'll see how he is on SmackDown Live, and I'm not supporting the guy what he did, Jinder Mahal. But dude, this they're ironically kind of pushing him. You know what yeah, I mean? I he's he's getting a lot of matches with high profile people. Like uh, what was it Finn Balor this week and last week it was Sami Zayn, and he was one of the last people in the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. So I guess they someone wants to invest big and. In, you know, it's probably Vince McMahon. Vince always likes those buff guys, so yeah. No, okay, you took steroids. Okay, we'll just put the, we'll just sweep that under the mat. There you okay. go. It's like, oh, we had some leftover from Roman Reigns. Give it to Jinder Mahal, right? And like, I don't understand the the, the commentators sit there and tell us, oh, Jinder Mahal has been eating clean and working harder in the gym to get a body in two weeks like that. When he first came back to two weeks, where he disappeared like a couple weeks after that, and then he reappeared on TV. He was a lot bigger, and you can't get big that fast. I know weight training. I know a lot of my buddies that are in weight training. You cannot get big that fast. It's literally impossible in, in, unless you have help, okay? And Darby's punished people for taking stuff like that. If you, if not, a lot of people remember. It was either last year or two years ago. Um, uh, Billy James, you know, the ass man, or Billy Gunn, but his really name's Billy James, uh, went to a weightlifting competition, not Darby-related, Took some performance enhancing drugs, and Darby fired him. And now Jinder Mahal reappears on TV last year, disappears for off off TV for a couple of weeks, comes back and he's even huger. He's got veins on top of his veins, <laughs> and he's not getting tested. I find that hard to believe. 
I think it's so funny that the commentaries still try to like say, "Oh, well, he's been training. Oh, he's been right? dieting." It's like, guys, give it a rest. Come it's on. It's done, and, and and Vince McMahon is in their ears telling him to say that. Guarantee they're forced to say shit like that. And again, it's it's again, it's it's done in Vince McMahon trying to cover it up. They try to they try to back it up by making the commentator say shit like shit like that, and make it seem like, oh, Jinder Mahal is this good guy who got clean and got into the gym more, and that's how he got so big. <laughs> we see through the bullshit. We're not that. St- we're not. St- I love Dirty thinks we're stupid. It's just another case where Dirty thinks we're idiots out there. Oh man, it would not surprise me at all if next week when they explain what happened to Finn Balor, they still go, oh, Jinder Mahal, you know, he's been working out so much that hit kind of right. got him, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh, it's just an unfortunate case where, you know, wrestlers put their bodies on the line out there, you know, gay shit like that. Um, anyways, Finn Balor won the match with a coup de gras. He looked, <laughs> you go back and look at the camera cut where they zoomed in on his face after he won the match. He looked dazed. <laughs> you can tell he was concussed. Um, but after the match, Bray Wyatt cuts a promo. Bray oh, Wyatt boy. comes on the commentary on the Tron here. I'm like, what? And he doesn't really cut a promo on Finn Balor. He cuts a promo like on being on Raw. Would it, it, they keep they kept doing camera cuts to to Finn Balor in the ring? So maybe they're teasing a future feud. Hopefully, maybe after Finn Balor recovers from his concussion. So maybe that feud's been prolonged now or delayed. Um. But yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. Bray Wyatt getting drafted over to Raw, as we said earlier in the show. Um, moving on, The Miz versus Sami Zayn. Decent match. I think it was a good showing by both these guys. Um, we obviously had the interference by Maurice, and uh, Miz tried to go for a skull-crushing finale, which Sami Zayn rolled up, or reversed it into a really nifty roll-up for the win. And... I actually enjoyed this match. I know we would have wanted Miz to win his debut on Raw, and it was kind of a way of burying the Miz, but I kind of like the ending of it, and Sami Zayn winning out to going on SmackDown is, uh, you know, always a thumbs up for me. Definitely. I thought it was like, it was actually surprising. I brought it up earlier while you were uh, fixing the thing in the back that Sami Zayn is actually the only person from Raw who was traded that didn't job, because everyone else, was it, uh, oh, what, yeah. Charlotte, uh, the club, uh, Jinder Mahal, they've been jobbing for the last two weeks, but Sami Zayn, he's actually won every single match after WrestleMania up until getting traded. So that's true. That's true. Good point there. Good yeah. point. All right. Well, Look for Sami. And I, I'm I'm all for Miz getting a better push to not getting jobbed. Bro, I like the dude. I, he's the the work he's put on and the the effort he has in the ring in the last year has been amazing. And this has been the best the Miz has put on character wise and in ring skill wise in a long time. So I'm all for the mids getting a push on Ron. Hopefully he gets used properly. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, <laughs> okay, we got to move on to this. And uh, everyone's going to love re-talking about this. This is something we could talk about for a year and love talking about and can't get enough talking about to the greatest. I have it titled The Greatest Backstage Brawl. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts off with Michael Cole uh, interviewing No Man Gaines over here. And about beating the Undertaker at WrestleMania, obviously they got to make us get more upset over that. You really had to talk about that, anyways. Braun Strowman interrupts the interview and just obliterately, brutally attacks Roman Reigns, like throwing him around. There's the one spot where he literally threw him in the air over this production box and then threw Titus catering tables, and <laughs> the one didn't even break, which it looked like a really hurt, like a spot that actually really hurt. Um. Then you got Roman Reigns uh, getting thrown around, throwing into the garage doors, and then Ro- <laughs> gets picked up by Braun Strowman and gets power slammed on top of these like uh, again production boxes that are on this wheelie cart. And I, we thought that was the end of it. And then Roman Reigns kind of rolls off and is against the wall. And then Braun Strowman takes his blue production box and just shoves it into the face of Roman Reigns. Oh, and a really, really done. Uh, the camera work was really good for this too. Um, and uh, literally a really, really tough spot to watch, man. A little bit of a cringe spot in terms of, like, that must have hurt, right? Um, Reigns gets put onto a paramedic stretcher. Well, the refs and stuff back uh, Braun, Strowman, Braun Strowman out of there. And while this is happening, while he's getting put on the on the hospital stretcher, is where the <laughs> crowd started chanting, you deserve it. <laughs> And just when you think it's over, Braun Strowman <laughs> comes in. <laughs> I'm not done with you. <laughs> I love how he was like running. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you run from? 
He was running with the stretcher. It just yeah. looks so funny. A guy oh, his yeah. size is kind of running with the stretcher. And oh, we got man. the camera cut that we noticed. A lot of casuals won't notice. We got the camera cut, and Braun Strowman wheels the stretcher off the shipping dock, and it just goes flying. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way Roman Reigns is on that. There's no way. And you can tell because when the camera cuts back to Strawn and showing him walking away and it cut, cuts back to the shipping dock, the stretcher is in a completely different place than where it, it mm-hmm. was when we seen it go off the shipping dock. I'm like, oh, so he just pushed Roman Reigns over? That's smart. <laughs> uh, anyways, that was just an incredible spot. Um, so they, they show the replay of that and they show Roman's going into the ambulance but Braun comes back. <laughs> I'm not done with you with yet. yet. The biggest pop of one of the biggest pops of the night. <laughs> the oh crowd's my going gosh. nuts. He's just punching Royce. I'm actually surprised they didn't mute that. Um, he starts punching Roman Reigns in the ambulance, comes out. He closes the doors and starts lifting the ambulance. I'm like, okay, there's no way he's going to lift it. Maybe they make an attempt or something. But I'm guessing he had some help on the other side. We didn't get to see the other side of the ambulance, but whatever. It still looked like an unbelievable spot. And he flips the ambulance over. <laughs> 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 Best backstage brawl I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> that was awesome. I literally brought back, like... After seeing this, I'm like, oh my god, I have to like think of like really good backstage brawls. The one that came to mind, it was back in like oh, 2002, 2003, when Shane McMahon and Kane were kind of feuding with each other, and Kane was like inside the limo, like head roof, or and he went inside the limo and it drove right through the truck, like the transport truck, and it like smashed. And they kind of played this like injury angle with, or I think it was during the, the Kane maybe and Matt Hardy and Lita thing. I don't know. I, just, I keep thinking of like backstage brawls, and I can't. I can't think of anything that topped this one. This one was probably the best I've ever seen. I, I think I remember the brawl. The brawl you're talking about. I think there was like a moment, uh, like toward the end of the segment, where uh, Shane drop kicked Kane into like a dumpster, and then he lit the dumpster on fire. Okay, that's it. That's that what it? I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ironically, hashtag dumpster fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually made a T-shirt. I I a uh, concept a T-shirt. The other day, and I sent it to Cappy. I've been meaning maybe putting it on our Instagram profile. It, it's the raw logo, and right underneath is equals, and then right underneath it is a dumpster fire, like a cartoon dumpster sketch fire. of a dumpster fire. <laughs> I'm like, man, if we ever, you know, got licensed with pro wrestling tees, I'd be like, that's the first shirt I want you boys to make. <laughs> you guys need to make this shirt. <laughs> but anyways, um, again, best backstage brawl I've ever seen. Uh, but watch, I guarantee you, Roman Reigns will be seen next week walking. Oh god! They also they also did something. They t- they said that uh, they were sending a reporter down to the hospital where Roman Reigns was, and I was like, oh my gosh! I tweeted out, dude, wouldn't it be so great if the reporter was at the hospital trying to talk to Roman Reigns, and out of nowhere, a a, a curtain lifts open and Brock goes, I'm not done with you guys. <laughs> yes, I saw your tweet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, uh, because that, that kind of reminded me, there was like a time where I think Vince McMahon went to the hospital, and then the nurse was like, oh, what do you think, doctor? And then it turned out, Stone Cold Steve Austin turned out to be the doctor, and he started beating the hell out of Vince McMahon. <laughs> I got a mere nurse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, board, the toilet plate, oh my gosh. But no, actually, they didn't show it, so. I actually think so. I saw someone tweet a photo, and they, they cropped Braun Strowman's head on Stone Cold, and they cropped <laughs> Roman Reigns' head on Vince McMahon's head. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, uh, but that was great. That was probably the best backstage brawl I've ever seen. I can't wait to see how this this continues into the upcoming weeks on Raw. So we'll see what happens. Unless Raw goes back to status quo, and we just made to forget about it. I, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit worried because if if this does go to a match at Payback, if you guys remember the last time these guys were in a feud, Braun Strowman was basically killing Roman Reigns every single week up until uh, Fastlane, and Roman Reigns uh, won. So I'm really hoping yeah. they this is not what they're doing where they have Braun Strowman basically beat up hashtag Roman fail every single week and then all of a sudden oh Roman Reigns wins. Oh god, so. god I hope not. I hope Ugh. not. Anyways, move on here. You got the club and the shining stars versus Cesaro and Sheamus and the Hardys. I feel bad for the club here. They have to team up with the shining stars. <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. Anyway, love seeing the Hardys. So awesome. Matt like tried pulling off two gimmicks here. He's on the on the yeah. Uh, I saw oh he, he did the version one, then the delete. <laughs> like really? everyone tweeted the gift. Like when you're trying to figure out what gimmick you actually want to use. 
It's it's funny he he does the delete last. It's almost like he's trying to delete his own gimmick. I think it's, so he <laughs> I think he's doing that on purpose. I think that's exactly yeah. what he's trying to do. Anyways, uh, Elias Sampson uh, made his little 15-second appearance before the match, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know if you saw it. He actually made an appearance earlier. It was one of the matches. I forget which one it is. But he actually made a – yeah, in the crowd. I did not notice it until someone actually (laughs) told me about it. (laughs) I saw the gif. (laughs) Uh, Good match, though. This was a good tag team match. Hardys uh, don't look like they missed a beat. They hit their tag team finisher for the win. Love it. Looks like the Shining Stars have just been deleted from Raw. Delete. And that's all I got to say about that tag team match. So we'll move on. <laughs> We're supposed to get Bailey, but Sasha Banks comes out first. Interesting. And Sasha gets in the ring. She says that she's got some unfinished business. Why was this word used like three times on Raw this week? I don't know what's going on <laughs> with that. Um, but first introduces her best friend, Bailey. Bailey thanks the fans about or thanks the fans for staying with her throughout her whole run with the title and without the crowd she wouldn't have had her WrestleMania moment. Oh, man. Dude, the, oh man, the entire time Bailey was talking, I swear I was like, "Oh, this is the part where Shasha, Sasha is probably going to put the bank statement on Bailey like behind her back. Here we go." I and then I actually wish it would have happened cuz it didn't happen. Yep. And the crowd was just the crowd was sick of it too. They're they're booing. I'm sick of I'm sick of seeing these two play the same character. They need to change it up. And Sasha kind of shows a glimpse of a heel turn here. She asked, uh, she kind of says, like, but that's over now. And I, and she's about to ask for a title shot when Alexa Bliss comes out. And I'm like, oh, freaking shit. And she comes up to ring and says, you guys can't be any more nauseating. I'm like, well, in a way, she's right. Because they, they really need to stop doing this whole Bailey underdog bullshit. She's the champion. And Sasha just needs to turn heel. It is nauseating. Um, See... Alexa goes on and says that she she's going to take over the Raw Women's Division and finally become Raw Women's Champion. And then Mickey James interrupts. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's unexpected. I really didn't see Mickey James going over. I, I kind of thought it might happen, but less likely to happen. It actually does happen. I'm intrigued. The, the two former BFFs from uh, right? SmackDown Live. Uh, it's, the, it seems like the shakeup is all about, like, People trying to run from their current feuds and the feuds following them, like the same thing with like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and that looks like Mickey James following Alexa Bliss. And she tells Alexa Bliss that her nightmare has just begun. And then Nia Jax attacks Mickey James from behind on the ramp and attacks the other two in the ring. She attacks Bailey and Sasha Banks. Nia Jax is being the beast of herself again. And I'm like, okay, um. Uh, I don't know. It, it's interesting to see what Nia Jax. I don't know. Again, she's stiff as hell. Uh, I hope she does better. I don't know. I I can't tell what Nia Jax. I just can't tell what to make of her. And she, but she does have this stare down, this interesting stare down with Alexa Bliss up the ramp because Alexa escaped, and they kind of have this like stare down where Alexa looked really petrified, and then when Nia Jax walked away, she got like the the cocky smirk back on her face. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And uh, uh, real quick, I just want to say how good Mickey James sold that shoulder tackle by Nijak. She flipped head over heels. So. Yeah, yeah. That was like, that was like the <laughs> uh, rock selling the oh, Steve Austin man. stunner. <laughs> so crazy. good job to Mickey James. And then we ended off Raw with Kevin Owens against Dean Ambrose, champion versus champion. I thought it was a really, really good match. They were given a lot of time for this match. It's almost like they ran out of stuff to do for Raw and SmackDown. Like, okay, you guys, go out there and just have a 30-minute match. Um I would love to see more of this. These guys wrestle each other. I think they put on a really good show. I think they could. Uh, I mean, I think it's, it's Kevin Owens, man. Anyone that goes up against Kevin Owens, that's actually a good opponent. Well, you're gonna get a good match out of it. Um, but now there are opposite brands. Ambrose won clean. Uh, interesting. I wasn't a fan of it, but whatever. It happened, and <laughs> again, like you said, Owens gets jobbed going out because out comes Jericho. I didn't think Jericho was actually gonna be there. And Jericho gets in the ring and gives Owens a code breaker. And that's how we end the show. So everyone got jobbed except for Sami Zayn going over to SmackDown. This was, I, honestly, this was the most stressful match of the night. Because I was like, oh my gosh, hurry up, hurry up. Because I'm hoping AJ Styles does not come out. Right. And then when the match ended with like five minutes left, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But then Jericho comes out, which is weird. Because we thought that he was going on tour. I mean, maybe he postponed it or maybe maybe he's not gonna um maybe he's doing both maybe he's touring and kind of appearing on wwe as well so mm-hmm. 
It, it's going to be interesting to see because we're not clarified. I've heard rumors that Jericho had shit going on during that weekend of payback, so maybe not. Maybe he finally got it cleared, so who knows. Um, yeah, Raw this week, I gave it a score of 8 out of 10. 8 uh, out of 10, that's, yep. I think it was a fair rating for the surprises and what we got out of Monday Night Raw. There's a lot more better things. It was less of a dumpster fire than it usually is, in my opinion. And I gave it a fair score of 8 out of 10. I couldn't really think of anything else but 8 out of 10. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, I'm going to have to – I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to uh, give it an 8 out of 10 too. But I definitely agree with Corporate Cappy because, dude, this this whole – the whole shakeup thing kind of like it was focused on the shakeup and they really couldn't build any feuds because, you know, a lot of the superstars jumped. So, yeah, it was kind of like a, a, a really big, big filler, and the big filler was the superstar shakeup. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I gave it a 10. I think that's fair rating. Uh, Cabby didn't send me his ratings, so uh, we'll get into that maybe next week, or he'll tweet out his ratings. Um, let's get into SmackDown. And SmackDown basically started off the same way. It was from TD Garden, Boston, Massachusetts. A lot of rumors going around this for obvious reasons with the women's division. Um, but we start off kind of like with uh, Ross started off. Ross started off with two jumping superstars. We got the same this week. And we start off with a bang. And I'm, because I'm my biased pick, because I love Kevin Owens. We start off with Kevin Owens, and he opened the show. And wow, man. Clean looking Kevin Owens, like we said earlier. Clean shaven. New blue suit. Interesting. Very, very interesting way to present himself. Um, he goes on and says, It's a known fact that Canadians are better athletes than Americans. <laughs> and as champion, he's here to be the new face of SmackDown, as well as the new face of America. <laughs> God. <laughs> interesting. He gets interrupted by Baron Corbin. I thought it was really interesting. I'm like, hmm, a heel interrupting another heel here? This is uh, this is different. I like this. And basically, Corbin says that you can't beat up me. You can beat up everyone in the back, but you can't beat me up. And it's Sami Zayn interrupts. And there you go. You got two picks off the back here, just like Monday Night Raw. But yes, finally, finally Sami Zayn's on SmackDown. <laughs> We've been waiting for this for so long. And he gets in the ring and he tells Owens that it looks like they will still be able to fight forever. <laughs> like the t-shirt <laughs> and the crowd chant. Uh, then AJ Styles interrupts. And I'm like, oh my god, this is probably the craziest opening of SmackDown I've ever seen. And he interrupts. And he says, this isn't the Kevin Owens show. And no offense to Zayn, the underdog. It's not him, his either. And it's not certainly not Corbin's show either, the lone wolf. And it says it's still the house that AJ Styles built, and it's still his show. Which, under, you know, he's right. <laughs> it's not really anyone else's show. Um, Dan O'Brien then comes out and announces that Kevin Owens will still defend the U.S. Championship against Chris Jericho at Payback in three weeks. But there's a twist, he says. Whoever wins the match will officially become a member of the SmackDown roster. And I'm like, okay, so Kevin Owens is not drafted to SmackDown? Like, he really didn't clarify anything for us here. We we got left on a confused cliffhanger. And he also announced that the triple threat match for SmackDown in the main event tonight will see Zayn, Corbin, and Styles face each other for the number one contendership for Owens' title. And what if Owens loses to Jericho? So is that, that number one contender become the number one contender for Jericho's title? And is Jericho now on SmackDown again? A lot of confusion and less clarification on things after this opening segment. Um, crazy to think about what we got in an opening segment, but again, it just it was confusing. Definitely I, very confusing. Yeah, I just I couldn't think of a possible. I'll hopefully get clarified in the upcoming weeks. I hope they there be kind of sits back and goes, okay, we kind of like made a clusterfuck this week how about next week's episode of raw and smack and we kind of clarify things so hopefully they go into that direction but really interesting opening of smackdown i like it and if this is the direction of what we're going to get and jericho not or owens not moving you got owens corbin zane and styles on the same show and you add in nakamura and pff, dude you got you got my money smackdown wins every goddamn week for me definitely um, i mean I was literally looking at these four. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what SmackDown Live is going to be. It has these four. And it kicks Raw's ass. It kicks Raw's ass. I'm a little bit worried. The only reason why this worries me is that the fact that they basically have some of the four top stars going after the middleweight belt. When I'm like thinking, why are they doing this unless, oh my gosh, is Bray going to win the title? Is he going to take the WWE Championship over to Raw? Because when you really think about it, 
Why didn't Daniel Bryan just go out there and say, hey, well, I'm going to make a number one contendership match, and whoever wins this match will be number one contender for the world championship. But no, he says he says the middle card belt, like it's almost as though he's hinting the fact that that title is going to SmackDown Live and there may not be a future that <laughs> for the WWE United Championship. States, the United States title is the top belt on SmackDown. That's a There you go. Uh, but, you know, I made a prediction before SmackDown. Like, I could see Brock Lesnar going over because there was the announcement of he was going to be a payback. I'm like, okay, this is probably because they're going to bring him over to SmackDown, and that's where the Universal title is going to be, and the WWE Championship is going to be on SmackDown, or on Raw. So, But that's not the case now, and I'm just left with so much... We're left with so much confusion on what's going on here. And it sucks because now if they don't plan on making the world title go over to Raw... We already know who's going to win the House of Horrors match. Mm-hmm. It's Randy Orton. It, it sucks. Why Why would you give away such an intriguing t- style of match? I just, oh, God. It just it ruins it for me. I hope, again, like I just said, I hope they come out and clarify a lot of things in the upcoming weeks. So we'll see what happens. And speaking of the WWE Championship, right after this happening, we got <laughs> Randy Orton versus Eric Rowan. Orton as champion still sucks to me. I can't get behind it. He's just the most boring WWE champion I've ever seen. And look, they care more about the mid-card title and the top superstars than Randy Orton because his spot in the show is right after the opening segment and you don't hear from him for the rest of the show. He's your champion. So, again, like you just predicted, it kind of looks like they're going that way. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Um... But this was a, a decent match, I guess you can say. I mean, Eric Rowan's not much of a wrestler, uh, and you're facing Randy Orton, kind of have Randy Orton carrying the match. And near the end of the match, Bray Wyatt kind of distracts Orton on Jumbotron. So Bray Wyatt's appearing on SmackDown too. I guess just like uh. a feud with. Uh, I don't know if he's going to appear in a physical role, but I don't like the brain jumping right now. It's not. It's doing nothing for me and adding more confusion. And talks about seeing Orton soon in the House of Horrors. And as Orton rolls out of the ring, he gets hit in the head with the freaking staff. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of Ro- or- Rowan kind of teases he's going to use a table and just kind of forgets about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then rolls Orton to the ring for his finisher, which is a freaking full Nelson slam. <laughs> Great. Um, it's just sad. This is the, your main title picture, and the rest of the show kicked ass. I don't know. It's. I feel like your main title should be main eventing the show, but, you know, that's just me. And can't really do it on Raw because Brock Lesnar is not showing up. So I don't know. It's eh, We'll just move on because I really don't want to talk about Randy Orton. Uh, I I feel like Randy Orton should like this should be the mid-card level. I feel like Randy Orton should be the uh, what? The um, US was it? The Intercontinental? Yeah, exactly. And he uh, It should. It should. I'm not like this. Yeah, me either. So move on. American Alpha versus the Usos for the Tag Team Championships. We get a Tag Team Championship match here. And again, how can how many times can these guys face each other until they improve the vision? They really need to do something to it because I can't. I'm gonna get sick and tired of seeing these guys face each other every week. I know it was a really good match this week because this match had a lot of good spots. There was a lot of near falls. Um, there was the one spot where American Alpha caught the flying USO spot and they turned it into a double belly to belly suplexes on the outside, which is really cool and really really well done. I mean, both these. The Usos and American Alpha are really, really good wrestlers and really good teams for the division. But if you're only going to surround it around them two, it's just going to get boring and lackluster. It's going to get as boring as Randy Orton. So um, we'll see what happens. There was a small blind there, or the smart blind tag by the Usos at the end that was hidden from uh, Chad Gable, which led into the Usos uh, pulling off their finisher and retaining the tag team titles. And then all of a sudden, at the end of it, the Shining Stars show up and attack AA. And they're being referred to as Primo and Epico. Then not once did Smack. This is where I, I, I try to, to understand the rumors of them going back to Primo and Epico because not once did the commentators refer to them as the Shining Stars. So is this a repackage or maybe they just forgot to say it? I don't know. I, I kind of, again, like you said, just drop the pamphlet thing and then you can get behind the Shining Stars. I'd be intrigued to see an Epico and Primo kind of. Uh, repackage and maybe again i love the idea of adding carlito but we don't know the status with him and he has a really bad ties with wv doesn't really like to come back so um definitely we'll i definitely yep definitely enjoy this just want to point out that they were wearing like casual clothes they were not wearing their hawaiian shirts they weren't wearing their what their caribbean tank tops this yeah. was just straight street clothes 
referring to them as Primo and Epico. And I like where this is going. Those two are really good wrestlers. So I'm all for it. And I a lot get of behind uh, them. If they get pushed yep. the right way, I'll get behind them. When they get pushed, like the way they were doing with the pamphlet bullshit and the way they got treated on Raw, you can't. It can't. That's why I hate them because you can't. <laughs> I can't get a guy behind a team when they don't get pushed properly. Like again, like the Ascension. I was all for them when they got called for NXT. If they got pushed the wrong way. I care less for them. So yeah. Um, what was next? Mojo Raleigh and Jinder Mahal. <laughs> uh, great. So we got Sarah Mahal now on SmackDown to concuss more people. And as for this match, I really didn't care. It did really absolutely nothing for me. There's a spot where Mahal got out of the ring to confront uh, Gronk. And Gronk threw a beer in his face. And Mojo Raleigh ended up winning the match with his... Uh, is clocking of it, and he actually like clocked Mahal in the face. I'm like, okay, fine, thank you, thank you, Mojo Raleigh, for getting payback for uh, knocking out Finn Balor. And then Mojo does his thing and runs into Gronk and his uh, parade of people uh, outside the ring. Cool, nothing really. I can talk about this match. Maybe Jinder Mahal gets pushed a certain way. They include him on Talking Smack, whatever. I'm done talking about this because I don't care. I can't get behind Mojo Raleigh in this stupid Andre the Giant Moral Battle Royal thing because it, it means nothing. It, it, it definitely does. Here, here's what I don't want this to lead to. I hope this is not going to be another one of those WWE celebrity matches where it's going to be Rob Gronkowski versus Jinder Mahal or or something oh like, God. remember last year at SummerSlam, they had that guy from Arrow and Neville team up, so oh, maybe yeah. a, a Rob Gronkowski and Mojo Raleigh versus Jinder Mahal and whoever the hell you know Jinder can find. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Tyus O'Neal <let's> catering. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways... Uh, Move on from this. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So, yeah, Shane McMahon had come out to address the women's division. And seriously, you need to be addressed because at that point I was like, you just took Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. What's going on with the women's division? So I really need to see this. He invites all the women from the Divas division to come out. And that was Naomi, Becky Lynch, Natalia, and Carmella. Ouch. That is a hurt division. And Carmella's out there with uh, James Cringeworth. And... Shane introduces the first woman to the division, and it's he kind of teases that it's going to be Charlotte, but then Tamina comes up. Tamina? What? Oh, boy. Can she even wrestle? Seriously. She is, she is as stiff as Nia Jax is. It's going to do nothing for the division. Maybe they need another dominating person, kind of like SmackDown Live's version of Nia Jax, but uh, uh, yeah, we'll just have to say. She's old. I, she she's is. Like I want to 50. Po- I want to point out real fast that uh, for those who actually caught it, that this is a uh, reu- reunion between Naomi and Tamina from oh, yeah. Team Bad, if you remember. Right. So yeah, I think they're gonna we'll play see. that. They're gonna. They're gonna. I think they're gonna bring that up. That's gonna be interesting. Um, but again, I don't know. I, Tamina does nothing for me, in my opinion. I think it was a really useless draft pick, in my opinion. Um, we move on. The crowd starting to chant, "We want Sasha." And Shane says, you guys uh, were going to say, you think I was going to say somebody else. And then he says, Charlotte. I'm like, uh, Shane, <laughs> they're saying Sasha, not Charlotte. Oh, my god! Not gosh. quite, Shane, not quite. But it's still we an need interesting a, pick. We need to point out real fast that they were in Sasha Banks' hometown. So this makes it even worse that he would say, oh, were you guys expecting someone else? Right. You, here in Boston? Oh, and then, oh my gosh. Charlotte, I don't know. This division looks so. Eh. Like, Charlotte just looks like she's going to kick everybody's ass. Who's who's going to sit. Uh, unless they have plans for Becky Lynch and Naomi and Natalia and Carmella and Tamina, I guess, to somewhat look dominant against Charlotte. That's just going to. To me, that's just going to bury the, the character that Charlotte just portrayed for, like, the last year of being this dominant girl on Raw. You know, she did lose her, her streak at Fastlane. And they kind of buried her a little bit after that. I still think she's the most dominant woman in the division right now out of both Raw and SmackDown. But you're putting her on SmackDown with literally, like, not a lot of competition. So, again, I think they left this open to Asuka and Peyton Royce and Billy Kay to come up. Maybe even Ember Moon. Maybe Ember Moon gets the, the call up. Um, but I think that's the only reason why the division looks as weak as it does right now. Definitely. Uh, should we do it? Do we should we actually point out the fact that they also have Lana, which was kind of surprising to me. They were kind of yeah. hinting that Lana will be part of the women's division. Eh, I mean, I saw I seen videos of her wrestle at live and she's OK. Uh, I hope she's improved. 
to say the least. I've seen uh, she's acrobatic. She's I, I think the gimmick that they gave her fits well for what she's gonna do. This like this nineteen eighties dancer kind of shit. I don't know what the hell it is, but um, I'm intrigued. Uh, I'd love to sit there and just watch Lana. You know, it's, it's no problem with me. Um, <laughs> oh man, well, wrestling wise, it's a kind of like a we'll see thing. Uh, wouldn't it have been so funny if they recycled Emma Lena's gimmick into her? It's like coming soon, which they did. They said Lana coming soon. I was like, oh god, here we go. Oh my <laughs> Lana's god, not coming right. out. Welcome, welcome the brand new Lana Lena. Here she comes. Dude, they might do soon. that. Because Rusev Uh-oh. not due back for a while. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, great. Oh, boy. <laughs> Coming soon. Uh, anyway, so move on. Um, Aiden English. And we called this on the Prediction Podcast. Uh, for all of you listening out there, go back and listen to it. Uh, me and Cappy called... Aiden English coming out as a singing gimmick. And what does he do this week? Comes out as a singing gimmick. We called this and we thought it was going to happen because we knew Aiden English was a good singer. And he comes out with this new kind of singing character and it's a real uh, heel type of one, which is really cool. I kind of like uh, Aiden English for the mid-card level for SmackDown. I think he can do a lot with that. And uh, Ty Dillinger. He has a match with Ty Dillinger, my boy from our hometown here. Uh, another big reaction. I seriously think this could be the next movement. The 10 movement is growing. We can see it. It happens every single week, even on Raw, where the crowd's chanting 10 to every count outside the ring. <laughs> like, they need to push him properly. He could be the next yes movement. And I think they, they're building him for a top mid-card feud in a top run in the mid-card because the way they're doing it the last two weeks of him showing up against two wrestlers in the ring uh, cutting a promo about themselves and him winning the matches, he's won more matches on the SmackDown main roster and he has in the last couple, like the last six months or half a, or even a whole year in NXT. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I think they're definitely building Dillinger the right way. I'm, I'm loving the momentum behind him right now. I only can, I only hope for it goes up from here and Ty Dillinger beat in English this week with the tiebreaker. And there's not really much else to say about that, but good for Dillinger. And again, I hope they get put, they push him the right way. I think there's a lot of potential in Dillinger. The amount of work he's put into, uh, into his work for the last 15 years, trying to get pushed and trying to get noticed. And he's finally getting a shot. Now you need to ride with him right now and ride with this 10 movement in this, the, the whole 10, the perfect 10 gimmick. I think they can do a lot with Ty Dillinger. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I would love it. I mean, I don't know. I don't. They could do this, but if, like you said, they do trade Brock Lesnar over to SmackDown Live with the Universal Title, I can imagine like a Brock Lesnar versus a uh, Ty Dillinger underdog feud. Right? Did they pull that would be great. Daniel Bryan treatment with him? Like definitely. maybe not against like the authority, but an underdog kind of story of uh, Paul Heyman just basically making fun of Ty Dillinger and thinking, you know, you're nothing. You used to be the guy DX used as a, a standby to get super kicked by Shawn Michaels, or you used to be the guy they used to you put in development and just be the workhorse or just work so hard and never get a shot. And I, I can, I can see that. I can see them doing a lot with Ty Dillinger in it. He's the underdog guy. He, he, his career, his really like, the way, the way, the, what he's done to this point shows underdog. And that's how you have to push him. And I, if they ch- chose to turn him heel, and a lot of people don't know this, or if you ha- a lot of people haven't seen this, go back on YouTube, go look at the NXT live events they've done overseas when Ty Dillinger was a heel and used to open the show. His heel promos in the ring were phenomenal. Like, absolutely great. The crowd would get so behind Dillinger at first, and when he would make fun of the city he's in, instead of chanting 10, it would be like, one, 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 one. <laughs> it was so great. Dillinger was a great heel, too. So the guy has the complete package... And I, I seriously think he's underrated. Not, I'm not just saying that because he's my hometown boy and I've known him for a long time. Um, I think he's got a lot of potential. And now would be the time to push him and to get behind this this 10 movement because I think it's money. It's seriously money. He's going to sell lots. I can see so much. They can, he can sell merch. If they they do more of these Perfect 10 merches, because, man, the Perfect 10 shirt, when it first came out, it was sold out within the first hour it got released. <laughs> and I remember I was one of the people that bought it. <laughs> And I had to wait, I think, a month and a half for that shirt, actually. <laughs> I didn't get it for a long time. So, you know, I, I, I as much as it sounds like it's a bias pick, and in a way it's a little bit biased, I think Dillinger is the future top mid-card champion. Even if they do, like what you just said, push him in the main title, he's an underdog. He, he's going to be pushed as the underdog. So we'll see what happens with Ty Dillinger. So 
again, again, it's one of those things. We'll just see. We'll see. We'll just see. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on here. Dolph Ziggler's in the ring. And he's talking about this superstar shakeup. And the big question that everyone should be asking is what's happening to Dolph Ziggler? Uh, Dolph Ziggler, actually, everyone's happening, actually asking what's going to happen to Dolph Ziggler. Is he going to be jobbed again? Or what the hell is going on <laughs> with your career, Dolph Ziggler? Because literally you're, you're coasting uh, retirement right now and or going to another maybe going to the being that indie guy the guy that leaves out being just trail you know travels through the indie company so i, I wouldn't mind that ziggler needs a, uh, a revamp but something happens here and i'm all for it if they continue with this feud he goes on a rant and says all the people coming in they're trying to ride his coattails but he gets cut off by nakamura shinsuke nakamura's music hits and i'm like yes okay i love this maybe they saw the magic that those guys put on the dark match last week and they saw a good feud between these two. Um, Nakamura comes out to the ring. And again, huge ovation. This guy is going to be so, so sick. And I'm hoping for a Styles and Nakamura match next year's WrestleMania. That's going to that, that'll top it all for me. Um, Ziggler says he doesn't know who he, who this guy is. So he's like he's basically saying, like, who are you? Like, please tell me who you are. And before Nakamura can even speak, the crowd starts singing his theme song. <laughs> And then Shinsuke takes the mic from uh, uh, Ziggler and says, I am Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> and the crowd just goes absolutely nuts. Starts chanting Nakamura. Ziggler tries to hit him with a drop kick or I guess a super kick. And Shinsuke catches him. And it's like, he has the look on his face. It's like, oh, no. No. And it was so great. And uh, – <laughs> he just knocks uh, Ziggler down and just does the whole like begging him to bring it on kind of thing as Ziggler's bailing out of the ring and then uh, Ziggler just walks up the ramp as they both stare down if this feud is happening I'm all for it a Ziggler and Nakamura feud will be epic I can't wait for those guys to have a feud with each other and even a match on live TV yeah, definitely I mean if this happens at a pay per view which I think they should wait for this could honestly be the match of the night I hope they wait for Backlash, man. Backlash would be a sick, uh, would have a sick card. If, if Ziggler versus Nakamura is on it, that'd be awesome. And I honestly think that's what they're doing with Nakamura. I don't think he's going to be on SmackDown. I think he may have, like, one SmackDown match a, a, a month, which I'm all for. Like, he'll have, like, his promos and stuff. But you have to take care of this guy, man. He is seriously the biggest dollar signs right now. And if you wear him out, he's going to have uh, – you can't wear him out, basically, is what I'm trying to say. He's he's got worn out a lot in NXT. He had a he did a lot down there, and you can't wear him out right now on the main roster. But if they do the whole one match a month thing and maybe an extra match at a pay per view a month, I'm all for the push for Nakamura and the way to utilize him on SmackDown because he's such a hot commodity. You can do that with Nakamura, and he'd still be you can, you still wouldn't get bored of him. So it's a perfect way to push uh, Nakamura on SmackDown and if he was Ziggler. Take my fucking money. Just take it. There you go. <laughs> Definitely. I'm ready. Uh, Let's do this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and move on to the main event. Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin versus AJ Styles. Number one contenders match for the United States Championship. Unreal main event match. Oh, my God. This is how main event matches should go down. There's so many good spots in this match. I can't even begin to start with one of them. Um, but the, all three of these guys, Sami Zayn, again, like we said before, Unreal is in SmackDown finally getting a shot. AJ Styles speaks for himself, but Baron Corbin, a lot of good promise here, and he had a lot of good. Sh- he had a good showing in this main event with with Styles, who is an obvious top contender on SmackDown, and Zayn, who should be up there too. Baron Corbin is the future of the top, the top of the you know top of the list for SmackDown, and a future top guy on SmackDown. Um, he brings a lot to the table. Guy could be the top heel on SmackDown, hundred um, percent. Guy's repertoire is just insane. Like his his wrestling moves, his signatures, his, the way he can uh, compete with the, the the people in the ring at a guy his size is incredible. Zayn and, and Styles aren't the tallest guys in the world. You got Zayn or Corbin in there who's a fucking beast, and the way he can move is just it's incredible. I love Baron Corbin. I've been a day one Corbin fan, and I can't wait to get him see him get pushed the right way on SmackDown. But this met this this match ends in a really cool fashion. Zayn uh, kind of sees Corbin climb up on the ropes. Gives him a haluva kick, but kind of forgets about Styles behind him and then turns around into a phenomenal forearm, and Styles wins. So I'm very, very intrigued here to see a feud with Owens. They can bring back their whole NXT uh, rivalry from... Uh, they're not NXT rivalry. Um, 
they faced each other in either uh, I think it was Ring of Honor. Uh yeah. I th- it, pre- it had to have been Ring of Honor because Owens was in Ring of Honor before this. They faced each other in Ring of Honor before this, so maybe they can they can talk about that because WWE is talking more. They they they're they're letting loose more on talking about the indies uh, lately, and they're I mean they're they're all for the indies, and there's also talk of having uh, that whole talk about buying ROH. I know it was fake, but I, I wouldn't doubt if Vince McMahon ever ever crossed his mind to buy a Ring of Honor. Um, but again, Styles and Owens. I'm actually intrigued for that. That's going to be sick. If Owens retains the U.S. championship and stays on SmackDown, an Owens and AJ Styles feud is going to be unreal. This is yeah. This is definitely. I'm very curious because you know of AJ Styles. Is he a heel or is he a face? But this feud would. I honestly, it would be a lot, lot better if AJ Styles just stays the same. Like, don't do anything that really makes it clarify you as a baby face. Just stay stay yes. the same AJ Styles that you are going into this feud, and it is going to be great. Yeah, I, so. I, think I, I think I said this the other week. I don't want to see AJ Styles as a baby face. He, he can get cheered. He doesn't need to be turned to baby face. He gets the baby face reaction as his own character right now. He doesn't need to go baby face. He needs to stay with the character he has now. I definitely 100% agree with you there, Michael Chow, 100%. And if they do it that way, you can have Owens, Owens presents himself as a top heel on SmackDown. The way he presented himself on Talking Smack, that, I think that's be the direction they should go. But in in saying that too, it's almost like they're gonna turn AJ Styles babyface now if they're leaning more towards that way. And it sucks, but whatever. Um, we'll see what happens. But a Styles and Owens match is for the U.S. title is gonna be epic. Gotcha. I mean, I bring up this fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin, when you really think about it, he was never actually a baby face. He was just some guy that the fans cheered for, and he just did whatever he wanted. Like, right. you know, what did Stone Cold do that makes him a baby face, other than the fact he beat up Vince McMahon? <laughs> so, AJ, just stay stay as you are. Don't do anything. Like, come out here and say the name don't of the city. Don't say you love the crowd. Don't, don't, don't say, say you love the crowd. Don't say it. Don't say you're doing this for the crowd. Don't. don't say don't don't go out here and say hey you are all phenomenal. I'm like oh god, <laughs> <laughs> it's over. God, no. Why? Oh god. So. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, hopefully not. I definitely hope not. Um, I was gonna say something. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah. So the branch or the, I guess a brand shakeup. I guess you can call it brand shakeup. Interesting confusion. A lot of confusion between both shows. Um, I gave, oh, yeah, I gave SmackDown 8 out of 10 as well. I gave them a fair rating, both Raw and SmackDown. I couldn't really decide a winner, so I both gave them an 8 out of 10 each. I know a lot of people Definitely. are leaning more towards SmackDown, but you know, I, I gave them an even score. Definitely. I'm going to... I would. I really love that main event on SmackDown Live, but then again, Raw had that great segment with Roman Reigns and I'm not done yet, Braun. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can give um, the edge to Raw a little bit. I'll get, okay. I know I'm contradicting myself, but 8.5 to Raw. 8.5, 8. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, it, I feel like both shows balance out, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give SmackDown Live also an 8. So I gave Raw an 8, gave SmackDown Live an 8, and yeah, so there you go. That's my score. All right, so we'll get into that final part of the show. And we got some headlines from me, and it's actually some headlines from Michael Chow, so hit the headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, a part of the show where we talk about any news and rumors surrounding the WWE. And I got two headlines, and Michael Chow's got a couple, so we'll get into them right off the bat here. And we'll start off with Dean Ambrose and Renee Young. Yes, if you guys haven't heard, they secretly got married. Ooh. It's true. So <laughs> the news here, after Dean Ambrose was seen wearing a band on his ring finger, during recent WWE events, a fan discovered a public record in, if I'm saying this right, Washu County, Nevada, and which revealed that Dean Ambrose and Renee Young filed a marriage application back in October 2016. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, when Kevin Owens appeared on Talking Smack last night, I noticed this. Okay, after reading this, I went back and listened. Like, oh, my God, he did say it. So on Talking Smack last night, he congratulated Renee Young but didn't specify what he congratulated her for. Both Renee Young and Shane acted confused, and Shane said, I don't know if we're talking about that. 
<laughs> but yeah, um, I do want to point out that they actually did confirm this on their Twitter account that WWE did say that Renee Young and Dean Ambrose are married. So, oh, good for them. So yeah, I, I want to bring up something that's kind of sad. They split them up in the draft. So oh yeah, they did. They, oh, and they're now married, well but now they're get, on. You might as well oh. just not get you know get into a couple with someone in relating to WWE because they just split you up. Exactly. Like unless you're Maurice and Miz. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, well, you know, you know <laughs> who knows, though? Maybe they just put Renee Young into, onto Raw. Who knows? Yeah, right? they could. Didn't definitely. she do Raw Talk, too? Yeah. I mean, Tom Phillips went to SmackDown Live for no reason. They never right? explained why Tom Phillips went from Raw to SmackDown Live. So Maybe they do that. You never we'll know. See. Hopefully not. Or hopefully they do, because, uh, you know, they're a cute couple. Whatever. Hey. Next bit of news I got is Kane. Corporate Kane's. Pol- I guess I got to <laughs> call him Corporate Kane because of this news. His political update. So Glenn Kane, Glenn Jacobs, aka Kane, officially announced his bid for mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, on Tuesday. Darby congratulated the Big Red Machine on getting into politics and wrote the following: "A very unexpected challenger has entered the mayoral race in Knox County, Tennessee. Former WWE, ch- I love that they, they list it here. It's former WWE champion Kane <laughs> <laughs> has officially announced that he is running for mayor of Knox County, Tennessee." Speculation began after Kane filed paperwork with Knox County Election Commission appointing a political treasurer, and now it is official. So good luck to Kane, the former WWE champion. <laughs> oh, man. I read somewhere today that his slogan is like it has something to do with fire or burning or something. Oh, it, it my was God. like, <laughs> oh, man. Good luck with him. So <laughs> yeah, that's uh, good yeah. luck, Kane. We'll see. And we got some news. Yeah. Michael Chow's got some news for us. All right. So I have one. What do I have? One, two, three. I have four, four news articles. So let's go ahead and get straight into them. So uh, Forbes, Forbes magazine revealed the 2017 highest paid WWE superstars. Did you hear about this? Ooh, no. So they list this out. And can you believe this is kind of breaking news? John Cena, who's been the number one paid WWE employee for the last couple of years, has finally been dethroned. Stop. I'm kidding. And uh, <laughs> I, actually, I actually tweeted this out because when you find out who number one is, you're like, what? What the hell is okay. this? But you can kind of believe why. So are you ready to hear this? All right, I'm ready to hear this. Actually, you know what? I'll throw I'll throw some more out there. So I'll start from five. So the fifth highest paid WWE wrestler is Dean Ambrose, getting okay. paid two point seven million for his contract in two thousand seventeen. Coming in at number four, no uh, uh, no surprises here. Roman Reigns, fourth wow, highest number four. Paid, number four. Uh, three point five million for his contract for two thousand seventeen. Wow. And uh, this isn't surprising at all. Thinking if you think about how much he does for the company, coming at number three, same he was at number three last year, Triple H. Yep. At uh, three point eight million, you know he's technically a wrestler and he does a lot for NXT in the back. And surprisingly, number two after being number one for the last I don't know couple of years, John Cena is now at number two. John Cena, I gotta take a guess at number one. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna have one guess. <laughs> Uh, John Cena made eight million dollars for uh, WWE. He, well, he's getting paid eight million for his contract in 2017. And coming at number one, if you can guess it, he's the man who puts the one yeah. in 23 and one. Brock Lesnar getting paid a unbelievable 12 million dollars for a contract for 2017. Wow. So, Brock a guy's not appearing in the month of freaking April is getting paid thirteen million dollars. Unbelievable! So, uh, I, ten, I million, mean, ten million more than your supposed top guy. This, I mean, John Cena is believable the last couple of years because he pushes he pushes merchandise. But Brock Lesnar, I mean, I can only assume this is Vince being desperate and saying like, "I want you to resign with the company." And Brock's like, "I don't want to do it." And he's like, "Oh well, how about if I pay you twelve million? Right. Or I'll, I'll pay you four million more than John yeah, Cena. Don't go to UFC. So. I'll give you thirteen. Okay, I'll stay. Okay, there you go. So <laughs> that is it for that article of 2017. The top highest paid WWE wrestlers, wow. and yeah, that will be it. So in our next bit of news, Alberto Del Rio declines a return to the WWE. <laughs> 
So I actually tweeted, Cappy, if you're listening to this right now, I actually tweeted this to him yesterday. Uh, Alberto Del Rio went on, where did he go to? He went on Periscope again. If it, if it doesn't get any worse for this rant that he's, this drunken rant that he's been doing, Alberto Del Rio went on Periscope again and basically said that uh, WWE has contacted him because uh, I think someone had uh, uh, tweeted out Alberto Del Rio saying, why are you talking trash so much about the WWE? And he basically said, dude, I'm, I'm, they try to contact me to come back and I'm never working for that effing company anymore and it's so PG and yeah, it's a piece of garbage and this and that. So Wow. Boy, definitely making things look bad for Paige. So I'm really hoping that they, you know, don't punish Paige for whatever Del Rio is saying on uh, on his uh, social media posts. So, and I think Paige knows this because she she's been active on Twitter lately and she's promoting Total Divas like like <laughs> like crazy. So I think um, in a way, I think Paige is doing it, or maybe even Del Rio's telling her like, oh, just so you don't get in trouble, promote Total Divas or something. Well, I know I made a mistake and I went a drunken rant, but I mean, Del Rio is Del Rio. <laughs> That's just the way he is and the type of guy he is. But I honestly agree with you. I don't. I hope they don't get punished over this. Um, Paige really needs to start thinking more right now um, about her career. And if she if she's going to stick with WWE, she got to like control her boyfriend in a way, man. Like he can't be saying stuff like that. Everybody's gonna punish you. And if you want to stay and you're promoting total divas and shit like that. You know, you you, you kind of have to think about you. Gotta, you gotta think about what the actions that are, are going on with Del Rio in the WWE. Like you can't, you kind of like almost have to tell him, like, look, Del Rio, I'm, like I'm trying to stay with this company, and you know, I want to, I want to have a future with them. Just you know, relax a bit and don't go on a drunken spiel again, and you know, say you're sorry or something. But Del Rio's not that type of guy, so I don't think that'll ever happen. Definitely. So I mean, it, it sounds very believable because you know, with this upcoming superstar shakeup, it wouldn't surprise me that they try to uh, get Del Rio back into the company because you know, I like him. I know Cappy likes him. He's a really good star. They just really, really messed up his pushes as of late. So, yeah. so yeah, Del Rio declines that he is never going back to the WWE. Guy's pushing forty, so you know, it yeah, doesn't right. go back. So. Okay, next bit of news. I mentioned this earlier when we were talking about Braun Strowman and the fantastic Roman Reigns Attitude Era segment. But, uh, Kyle, did you know that there is currently a petition going on on change.org? Mm. Oh, wait, I think I heard about that. Is this the petition that someone put to fire Braun Strowman? Oh, my gosh. Yes, Are it you is. Kidding me? So someone went on change.org. If you guys don't know about this, it's uh, it's anyone can submit a petition, and I'm I'm not 100% sure, but I think if you get over, it's either 500 or a thousand uh, signatures that it actually has to be reviewed by someone at the White House. So wow. So, so it, it it does have a reputation of people sending in stupid uh, <laughs> stupid petitions, but uh, if it gets over that many autographs or signatures the white house actually has to look at it so i might so, start one uh called drug test engineer mahal please do <laughs> <laughs> so there you go so um do i have the uh paragraph so i don't have the paragraph but to sum it up someone basically uh was did the petition and they basically said that the uh the beginning was kind of stupid they said us the wwe universe did not appreciate what happened to roman reigns i'm like what, what? are you're talking you're talking on behalf of the WWE universe, and oh, who is cheering? People. You mean the eight people that like Roman Reigns? Okay, <laughs> exactly right. So people are basically tearing this up on Twitter. People making fun of this. Of people, it's like, do you not know that wrestling is fake? I mean, you know, mm. I mean, it's entertaining and whatnot, but man, so I don't know who came up with this. I'm hoping it's someone who seriously thinks this is a joke, or maybe there are people out there who believe that Santa actually exists and. <laughs> Or or those those cougar women who always scream when Roman Reigns comes out wouldn't surprise me. So, <laughs> oh man, um, I actually read that. Actually, I think I read it before the show today that the last signature on it was spelled Roman Reigns, but it was spelled differently. And people are saying, "Oh my God, that's actually Roman Reigns being an idiot and actually writing his name as a spelled <laughs> name and acting like a goon." <laughs> So that'd like, be funny. I doubt it, it. Oh, man. You know, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this petition was started by someone from WWE just so they can talk about it on Raw saying, oh, look at this, a petition, you know, for <laughs> Braun Strowman. So it was probably Vince. He probably started this thing to get oh, Braun some steam. So, 
So there you go. So uh, to clarify, the petition said they wanted Braun either fired or moved to SmackDown Live. So I, I technically like Braun. So, and he's definitely not winning this feud with Roman Reigns at uh, at Payback. So if you want him to hand Braun over to SmackDown Live, I'd like it. So yeah, can we get him over here, please? Thank you. There you go. <laughs> so our so our last bit of news is rumors of the SummerSlam card. So these are the current rumors of what's going down SummerSlam 2017. Are you ready for this, Kyle? I think I actually know one of them, so but I'm gonna let you read so, it first. So here we go. We got one of the main events is Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship against Braun Strowman. Okay, I like that. So they tease it on Raw, even though Braun went away like a scared chicken. Uh, yeah, they're gonna try and do that. Yeah, I don't know. They kind of you know dropped the the seeds for it, so we will see from there. Uh, for the SmackDown side, we have SummerSlam 2017. We have Randy Orton defending the WWE Championship against AJ Styles. Uh, I hope they go with the other rumor I read. Yeah, so, yeah, um, their match on SmackDown was pretty good, but we'll have to see. We'll see. So, I'm hoping I'm hoping Randy Orton enters this feud as a heel. They've kind of been shuffling back and forth. Is Randy Orton a heel or is he a face? Just turn the guy heel. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. So, so uh, next on the card, we have, for SummerSlam, John Cena versus Baron Corbin. So, uh, so my well, rumor that I read... And I think you would agree with it. I'd love to see it. Is actually the WWE Championship involving John Cena, and John Cena as the champion going into um, SummerSlam. Which I'm guessing, if I could add to this rumor, didn't really clarify how we'd win it. I'd say, as much as we don't want to see it, but Cena winning Money in the Bank and actually cashing in the same night and beating Randy Orton. But now stay with me. The WWE Championship. At SummerSlam, John Cena is the champion versus the challenger, Shinsuke Nakamura. Ooh, that'd be good. That'd be really good. Like, you think about it more and more. John Cena, because you think about AJ Styles and John Cena last year's SummerSlam, match of the year. This year's SummerSlam, match of the year potential again. Shinsuke Nakamura versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. And then the rumor went on to say it could lead to Nakamura winning the championship, right? And holding yeah. the title from SummerSlam to WrestleMania. There you go. And then finally getting someone we want to see win the Royal Rumble, AJ Styles, and setting up AJ oh. Styles versus Nakamura for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. That'd be good. That, oh, wow. Yeah. Because right now, let's get that match. <laughs> the last three years of the Royal Rumble were people we didn't want to win. Literally, have been all people like, no, I didn't want to see that. Batista, Triple H, and and uh, Randy Orton. No one wanted to see any of those three win. Oh boy! So I think it's about time we get someone <laughs> that the crowd actually wants and will cheer for the ending. Because the last three WrestleManias, they got booed out of the building. <laughs> Definitely, uh, you know, three Royal Rumbles. <laughs> SmackDown's been kind of winning a lot in the World Rumble, so I would love it to see if maybe AJ Styles wins the Money in the Bank and Shinsuke Nakamura. Like has the title, and then AJ Styles for once, like he goes, you know, I'm not gonna attack you from behind. I'm basically gonna challenge you at WrestleMania, and I'm handing this wow. briefcase in. I'm not gonna attack you from behind. You know, I could see it maybe at Fastlane. AJ Styles basically just says, "Hey, you and me, just so you know, I'm catching this in in advance, and I'm gonna see you at WrestleMania." So that'd be sick. That'd be sick. So yeah, so that'd be good. So yeah, so Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens. I, you know what? They change all the time. So yeah. Uh, we will see. Uh, next we have, oh, goodness, good luck to him, Roman Reigns versus The Miz. <laughs> oh, boy. So, oh, boy. So good luck to The Miz right there. There's a funny gif. I think you've seen it of uh, Roman Reigns punching Miz in the face and him just falling over. No, so, I not see that. <laughs> so there goes that. That's pretty much what the feud is going to be. Bye-bye, and Miz. And the last on the card for these rumors is uh, Bailey versus Sasha Banks. So... So I'm pretty sure Cappy would love to see that. But yeah, there you go. That is the current. And they barely just had to shake up. So I'm pretty sure some of these will change. So that is the current rumors going on right now. Mm -hmm. And that will do it. That will do for my news. I like it. Or headlines. No. Headlines. So. <laughs> <laughs> headlines. Um, I guess you can count as headlines. If you guys did watch NXT tonight, they debuted a new theme. 
and they debuted a kind of like a, a revamped uh, mini like Titan Tron in background tonight. I watched it before the show. Um, it's re- I like the theme. I really do enjoy it. I, I know there's nothing wrong with the old theme, but the new theme they created for NXT is really good. So go check it out, guys. Uh, Triple H tweeted. I forget what it's called, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, and speaking of NXT, I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna have to watch it next week because I didn't even know this actually happened. I-, I thought I read all the spoilers right, but. Ty Dillinger is facing Eric Young next week in a steel cage match. Oh boy, that's gonna be sick. Oh, uh, yeah. do you do you see Ty Dillinger winning? Because it kind of wouldn't make sense if Ty Dillinger's right. on SmackDown Live and he wins. Right. No, but so I think, I think Sanity gets involved. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember there was one time where it's like it's weird that Nia Jax she went to Raw and then there was like a paper, there was like a NXT event where Nia Jax was wrestling uh, Asuka even oh, though she yeah. was on Raw. So, so yeah, yeah we'll, see. we'll, we'll see. see. So, I also heard that tonight was also the debut of uh, Drew McIntyre. So, yeah, I'll definitely have to watch. Yeah, I'll definitely have to watch NXT as well. Unfortunately, but. didn't have his Broken Dreams theme. They had a new one. Oh, sucked no. ass. Oh man! You mean no Vince McMahon coming out and say, "Hey, he's still the chosen one." <laughs> no, <that'd be laughs> he's still sick. the chosen one. That'd be awesome. But no, I was really upset that he didn't have his Broken Dreams theme. I, that was, I love that theme. But uh, hopefully they bring it back. Hopefully they get the license to it and bring it back. But anyways, uh, yeah, NXT tonight was sick. You have to go back and watch it and see the new theme. But that's going to wrap it up for the show. It's been a long show, but it really, really enjoyed the show this week. So I want again, before we end the show, I want to thank you, Michael Chow, for being the honorary guest co-host here on the Lowdown Show. Guys, it was my absolute pleasure, and I was actually, you know, I thought about this earlier. I was happy to be on this Pacific show because we had actually talked about doing a draft uh, episode, remember? But oh, yeah. it, I guess I guess it looks like the draft isn't going down this year, so that's why I'm very glad to be on this wannabe draft show that Vince McMahon calls the Superstar Shake-Up. You know what? I don't care. I think we still should still do a draft episode one day. I think one day soon in the next couple of months we should do a draft episode just for fun, just for the sure. hell of it, and just throw it out there. Who knows? I think we should still do it. I think it's a really cool idea. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if, like, what, in a couple of months, Vince goes, oh, well, you know what? The wheel is still turning, everyone. Time for another superstar <laughs> shake-up. <laughs> Yeah, like Would it be crazy now? after payback, Vince McMahon comes out and oh just says, God. hey, we're having another superstar shakeup. So, right, so oh. what's happening on TNA this week? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Oh. But that's right. again, thank you, Michael Chell. And we definitely going to have some more uh, work with you on this podcast for sure in the future. And uh, best of luck to Michael Chow TV again, guys, Michael Chow TV on Twitter and on Spreaker. This guy does his own wrestling podcast. So go check him out and give him a follow guys. If you're a fan of Olds Bar wrestling podcast, you'll be a fan of Michael Chow TV, 100% and go check out his show. Um, Oh my God. I'm sorry. It's so late right now. I totally forgot the name of your show. Can you please tell me? It is what is it's WWE MC TV. That's it. Yep. There it is. (laughs) <laughs> that's it hashtag WMCTV if you guys get confused and need some help on Twitter other than that yeah. guys that's gonna wrap it up for the lowdown show this week week number two of the lowdown show on Noah's Bar Wrestling Podcast we're your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week also during the show we will have our returning segment next week the list of 10 and WWE headlines as always where we talk about any important news and rumors related to the WWE Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. And after we're done recording, it is posted in full on Spreaker itself on YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and is also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand Wars. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show by tweeting at NoHoldsBarWP and by following us on Instagram and Facebook at NoHoldsBarWP as well. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I'm joined this week by our special guest co-host, Michael Chow TV. Guys, thank you very much. (laughs) And as always, including Michael Chow this week, we're here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. (laughs) 